Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 604, baby. That is 604 of the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, coming at you live and direct from an undisclosed location. I hope you are doing good wherever this podcast may find you. Great, amazing, happy to hear that. How am I? doing as best as I can with the time I have available presented to me on this very given day. But I'm happy to be here in front of you, coming through your earphones, coming through your speakers, coming through your cars, um, you know, through YouTube, wherever you're listening to this, I'm just glad. I'm glad you are carving out some time of your day to listen to my inherent nonsense throughout um, this the span of this podcast. I do greatly appreciate it. I don't take any of that listenership for granted because I know how much content's out there. God damn it, I know. I pump out some of that trash myself so I can only imagine how much stuff that you're having to kind of sort away. So the fact that you click on my thing willingly, curiously, um, eagerly sometimes, damn, son, I can't not not be happy. You feel me? I can't not not be happy. So... What's been going on with me? Many, many different things. But first thing to jump on, I had a performance review at work today. A performance review. You know what one of those things are, right? They're usually things that only get sprung upon you when you're probably not doing the greatest or you have some things to improve on. Or if you work for a company that has those kind of things, airtight and watertight, they're usually a kind of thing to keep everybody... um, kind of on their toes to make sure people are performing le- at, the, at the right level to make sure people are kind of pushing each other which essentially kind of you know it's a bit of a um it's a bit of a win-win for the company because if somebody crumbles and they're not good enough for the role or they don't step up then you could just put them out to pasture if they respond well to the performance review then you've got somebody that's hungry and ready to kind of you know sink their teeth into things won't take it for granted anymore it's going to be attacking a day and obviously it's going to be helping you as a business generate you more income uh, or whatever you know just help you in terms of the day-to-day running of the thing so it's kind of a win-win in that regard so one way it kind of like sorts out the wheat from the chaff and the other day it kind of um what do you call it it kind of also allows you to have the opportunity to basically give someone a chance to prove their worth uh, so it's either sink or swim in those situations and mine was funny because for the most part i think a good kind of word of caution is like if your performance review starts off with someone giving you um compliments like you know un- unnecessarily glowing compliments that have nothing to do with the actual role that you do it's usually a sign that, that the performance review won't be great it won't be on your it won't be what you think it's gonna be but luckily for me um i am pretty self-aware i'd say i'm probably one of the most self self-aware people that i have that i know or that i've ever come across in life i think for the most part anything about me that even you the viewer you the listener I might think is a, a bit of a negative in terms of my personality or things that you've heard or things that you've seen I most likely have ripped myself to pieces about it a million times over like I legitimately legitimately know Wagwan with me at all times I'm not ever shocked about the things people say I'm not ever taken aback even if I pretend I am I definitely know it's definitely things that I'm aware of that I kind of want to address but I'm just being lazy I'm not following through um, it's maybe not on my priority list whatever it may be but there's no chance that i don't know about it it's impossible i always know so with this performance review i kind of was already aware of what was going to be said um again it's nothing crazy it's nothing that's going to really um you know kind of really um cost me to basically lose employment that's not going to happen anytime soon because obviously you know i'm somebody that can address those things pretty quickly they're things that can be actioned very fast but the problem with being self-aware is that if you're that self-aware the question needs to be asked why don't you just do the things that you know someone doesn't like and then that kind of brings up some things that you probably don't want to say out loud which is you know i'm still slowly but surely coming to grips and coming to the idea or coming to the point in my life where i'm starting to respect jobs it's a weird thing to say this right but i think anybody that's kind of trying to pursue a creative endeavor anybody that's trying to maybe set up their own business anybody who has aspirations even to be rich and famous whatever it may be i'm sure you've all had the same thing where it's very difficult to respect your job that you have like the actual job that pays you monday to friday or however long you work it can be a really hard thing to kind of switch in your brain i remember for a long time i had battled with it and then i remember thinking maybe i'm not too bad when i met other people who are also kind of 
trying to pursue their own careers in the arts, in the creative fields or whatever else they were trying to do. And I remember meeting one person in particular who was very against even having a full-time job. Like it didn't make sense to that person. They would just do the thing. What would they do? Oh, yeah. The thing that they would do is that they'd work for a set man period of time. So if it was like six months, four months, not do anything else, save up and then use that money for that four months, then allow them to do what they want to do for the next six and then hope that six months is like a, a it's like a trial it's like okay it's like a make or break like it's like a football trial you hope like okay cool i'm gonna try go to all the trials i can in the summer and then bang hopefully one of them bangs one of them lands i get a record i get my sorry my football contract and i can go pro and then quit my job but obviously that's a bit of a nutty thing because you're not you know you're basically only attacking you're basically only basically yeah you're basically only attacking the day or trying to secure your dreams or trying to achieve your dreams sorry within a six month window so you're giving yourself way less time than most people would because obviously you need way more than six months maybe more than 12 it could take a lifetime you never know how long it could take or it can never happen which is also another question another thing that people don't like talking about but hey let's just stick to the topic so i've never really been that someone i've kind of always struggled with that and um i think as i've gone older as i've become more mature as i've just gone through more things and i've seen the actual reality of life i think is that sometimes as a kid you definitely overrate your youth you definitely you definitely ride on the back of your youth too much. We're kind of seeing it a bit with academics and um, what he's going through at the moment with um, all these OGs sort of like kicking him when he's down because of that comment that he made about, you know, old, about veterans and hip hop being old and dusty. And the general point he was basically making was that he feels like the, why are the pioneers of hip hop, the ones that found this such an amazing um, genre that's essentially taken over the entire world. Why aren't they rich and famous also? Or why aren't these people, um, are able to sort of um you know give game to the younger kids coming up or why don't they have labels where they basically have all these young kids in their kind of roster of artists and why is it all you know outside people the you know the white man whatever maybe all these kind of questions right but i guess him using dusty was something that kind of set people off but in general that's definitely one of those sort of like somebody overrating their youth and even though he's not that young he's only 31 um it's still somebody who he's at you know he's amassed or he's attained a level of success very quickly in a very short space of time he's attained a lot of money in that short space of time and he's probably thinking to himself this is so easy why weren't the people who pioneered this stuff why weren't the people like why hasn't why didn't hot 97 do this before me why didn't the breakfast club do this before me so he's probably thinking those sort of things and kind of um in some ways um what's this what's the thing called he's in some ways uh he just can't wrap his head around it right and i guess i'm just general i'm just thinking in terms of this you sometimes can make you think you you can sometimes make you feel invincible like you've got all the time in the world or that your thing's going to happen tomorrow and sometimes it just ha doesn't happen tomorrow it doesn't matter how much effort you put in it just doesn't work out the way you want it to work out um that's just the way life is and obviously persistence plays a lot plays a big role in this or maybe you know pursuing something that you actually do care about because it won't be work because you just wake up every day and do it because you love doing it anyway but regardless those are the things that i kind of have to wrestle with over time and thankfully thankfully i got to that stage of maturity where i was able to kind of respect jobs but i still got little things in me that kind of show up day to day which is probably what my performance which definitely what my performance review kind of illustrated so this is just a message to the kids coming up now it's especially the ones who are trying to make it especially the ones who are on TikTok, especially because that kind of platform because it's new the algorithms and the, and the stats behind it the views are a little bit shaky i'm not really too sure if all that stuff is real but because TikTok are trying to basically um corner one side of the internet or social media they're obviously going to be um making sure the views and the engagement of the things that they put out is somewhat is somewhat attractive to up and coming content creators so they know that they can easily go from being a no one to being someone quite well known on TikTok and I think all that stuff can get your head and make you think why aren't I why aren't I also writing for Vogue why aren't I also on the front flipping row of this fashion show why don't, don't I why haven't I got the ability to shoot this campaign or go and speak at this keynote thing or whatever it may be and I think sometimes in life you have to realize that things just take different sets of time for some people. Some people can make it in a year. Some people it takes 10 years, some people it takes 15. But if you're really pursuing something you want to do, it shouldn't matter how long it takes as long as you're able to do the thing that you enjoy on a daily, weekly, whatever you basis. But also a really vital part of it, component of it is having a job. 
being able to support yourself and being able to support your dreams, right? Being able to kind of, um, you know, buy equipment like I've been able to do, um, being able to, you know, buy flipping, what's it, what's that called? Um, being able to sign up for a, uh, a place to host your videos, to host your podcast, whatever the things that I do, being able to pay for studio time, uh, to rent a studio, to buy a studio, whatever it may be, all those things that allow you to basically do the thing that you actually like doing, the thing that you actually are passionate about doing, it all comes from having a job. So you have to get to a level where you respect the job to the point where you're giving your all within those hours that they give you. Um, and that's the that's the bare minimum. There's nothing else that can cut it. Anything else like, oh, you're moaning, you're coming in late because you're tired, no one cares they have paid for your time nine to six turn up on time smile do a great job be personable be fun to be around you know light up the room whatever it may be that you want to do and then when you leave you leave but actually in that time do it because i know i didn't do it in the past before and i've you know and it really did kind of bite me in the bum and i think the one the couple of times i did do it and was really a high performer i can only say i got rewarded for it like for instance this one job i had in particular um you know i kind of got on really well with the manager there and she kind of took a bit of a shining to me i guess maybe maybe before i was good at what i did and since i've left that place which i left you know voluntarily because i wanted to go and pursue other things and i had a kind of an offer from another company that i went to that you know eventually in four months ended up going under but that's a story for another day but that place that i left the manager liked me so much that any time i'd you know gain contact for a reference um, anytime there's an opportunity to speak highly of me through other people that she probably didn't even know uh, that related really back to me, she'd do it. And even now recently, you know, putting in touch with other people to kind of speak about an, another thing that's happening and just be kind of, you know, uh, a kind of um, somebody that can maybe lend some advice or insight on some things. It goes a long way to show that if you do a good job, it doesn't matter how small the role is, how lowly you think the position is, it does sometimes come back now that it cannot, no, it's not always going to come back in the like again. There's not there's been no monetary gain from this sort of stuff. There's been no jobs from it, but it's just been good to know that there's somebody out there who's championing you with whilst you're just asleep, whilst you're minding your business, whilst you're going about your everyday. There's somebody out there that's saying, "Oh, and when they hear your name, like, oh yeah, that person's sick. That person did this. That person that, and just stamps you. And you don't know how where that goes and where that carries. You have no idea where that's going to lead. But it's just good to have that out there in the atmosphere. Why would you want to have the opposite? Oh, that guy's lazy." he she did this or anyway, you don't want that so i think for the most part i think you know most more people need to do that and start respecting jobs i think for the most part creative people hide the fact that they have real jobs i don't i say i have one i remember um i saw a thingy what i see i think i remember seeing a stand-up comedian i forgot who it was some stand-up comedian um or maybe it was a, a book about stand-up comedy somebody said in a book and i don't know what the reason was so if anybody knows please do um email me or reply in a comments or something but i remember hearing a comedian or somebody involved in uh, the comedy industry saying something along the lines of don't tell the audience or don't tell jokes that make it known that you've got a job like just perform because i guess the idea behind it may be against my own thinking about i don't know anything else i haven't read anything else but i think my own thinking behind it would be maybe when you're on stage you kind of want people to be transported away from their daily struggles or from their daily kind of work life so you kind of avoid work related jokes or making it known that you have a nine to five because you want the person that's watching in the audience to be kind of you know transported into your world and not have that world be any reflective of their kind of day to day that they don't like so you talk about the other things outside of it you know whether it's going on holiday whether it's airports whether it's in shops whatever weekly shop whatever it may be relationships but try not to do jobs i think that's what i remember here people someone saying but i think it's a bit idiotic because you know let's be honest like what was somebody my age um, at my stage of life with a YouTube channel with, with, or with the podcast that's like as small as mine be doing outside of this if I wasn't working and I mean it doesn't make sense it's pretty obvious that I have a job so why would I lie and I don't have fucking um, why would I obscure the truth and I don't have flipping rich parents either so I mean I can't do a Peggy Goo and just move to Berlin and hang out you know what I mean that like, that's not gonna happen so it's just doesn't make any sense but I guess you know in creative life you have to kind of do this whole like um fake it to your make it thing in it 
but yeah i'm not really on that kind of vibe you know what i mean i'd rather just like try to make it so yeah that was basically my thinking on that one that i thought maybe some of you guys may take some value from if not disregard it and just keep doing what you're doing because i'm sure some of you guys are pretty much fine and then moving on I want to quickly touch upon this is the courtesy of supreme drops we have maybe my favorite supreme drop i think so far of the collection because i think this is featuring all the stuff that i'm actually interested in and that i really want to purchase so this is courtesy of supreme drops the fantastic account that i mainly follow on twitter because that's mainly the app that i'm on all the time um, and the flipping handle is uh, drops drops with the s dot gg so definitely go check that out if you haven't already and it says supreme week five partial drop list and retail estimations this week's features the gremlins i write collaborations um more lookbook items including the shadow plate flannel zip up free unseen t-shirts will also be releasing greta free kings guns pearl trait stay tuned for updates now obviously i mentioned it previous times already but the kids nowadays don't know how good they have it with accounts like this back in the day when i used to buy supreme especially in the beginning or when i used to buy supreme uh, religiously um we'd get most of our updates about stock from places like super future i don't know if you remember that forum not really fifth dimension because you know the guys on there were cunts and they were probably gatekeepers and stuff particularly one per guy particularly one guy like a turbo turbo cunt um you know if you was to cross the street and get run over by a truck i wouldn't i wouldn't drop a tear but that one dude you know that kind of permeate that kind of you know gatekeeper type mentality but for the rest of them i think it was super future was i think of i think that might have been it in terms of info actual info i can't figure the other one like in terms of all oh, um i've heard this is coming that is coming and there'll usually be people connected with the store so it's the same people that probably feed people these kind of news are the ones that were kind of leaking the information about certain things dropping and um maybe it's different because i think some of these guys do back end stuff and are able to you know go i think before they were able to go in the back end and see stuff that's going to be pending to go through um the store i don't know whatever it may be so um now the kids have it nice because they know exactly what's coming up and they say save up before i wouldn't know so it'll be dropping on a thursday and you'd only find out because the kids in america will be purchasing it and it'll be posting you're uploading it onto ebay and then you'll find out that way kind of thing so you kind of had to you know then save up your money and try and get a proxy or whatever maybe to ship it over for you blah, 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 and long but at least these guys got this account but anyway going back to what i want to purchase the things that i'm really looking forward to in this collection that i really really want number one is 100% the iraq collaboration now the face mask and the hoodie and the pants is pretty decent but let's be honest i'm probably not gonna wear a hoodie like that anytime soon with the iraq logo and then um, all over the hoodie and then it's stamped with the supreme logo too they've done this type of thing before anyway iraq clothing i remember still having this iraq hoodie i can't believe i flipping sold it honestly i bought it from ebay to begin with ages ago and i resold it again on ebay like not even for that much it was just uh, i can't believe i did it it was like a gray hoodie um maybe like a what would you call it um is it asphalt what the kind of gray is that it was like a charcoal type gray and then in the middle it's like a pullover hoodie oversized and then in the middle it had the massive iraq letters i r a k and then um i guess the border was 3m so obviously glow in the dark but the gnarly bit about it was that there's a logo in the front with iraq massive on the chest like that and then there was a logo on the back of the hoodie that with the words um reversed that also said iraq with a 3m like greasy like one of the best hoodies you'll see and i guess it was really done for most part if i remember correctly they didn't even sew a proper label on it it was like proper diy streetwear level, level shit the fucking screen print was heavy as hell on the front of it i hardly washed it in normal washes we took it to the dry cleaners like and i just oh i don't know i regret selling that so so much man but anyway so that logo so that kind of stuff i've seen before the kind of all over print the pants as well go hard the face marks obviously makes a lot of sense too with iraq and if you know the origins of the name that you'd know that that makes a lot of sense also but the gloves are what i'm really interested in right and we're gonna actually go here into the preview to go see the gloves that i've done with a collaboration with the brand mechanic and i've actually got a plain pair of mechanic gloves that i wear now for my bike that i use all the time as you guys can see there on the camera you see those right those are the plain mechanics that i usually wear when i'm cycling and whatnot on my little fixie right? as you can see and pop those little fingers out see that here boom 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 makes a lot of sense so clearly someone like myself that rides a lot right that goes out and rides one of the riders will be definitely into these flipping iraq gloves they look absolutely smoking 
really look good supreme mechanic iraq work gloves like these look so 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 good i like the look of these completely and i'm considering hopefully buying two pairs for myself because i know what i'm like i'm gonna end up wearing these every day and i'm gonna regret i didn't get two pairs so it's probably gonna be two pairs of those for sure um, if the face mask was a bit cheap, I'd probably get two pairs of that and the face mask. But, you know, $68 for a face mask, I'm not really that deep on. And also, with my hair being the way it is, I'm not really going to be getting braided all the time. It's a bit of a waste of money. I'm not going to wear that too often enough to make it make sense. But I'm sure by the time the winter comes around, I'm going to be regretting not having this. But it is what it is. And then the other thing that I'm definitely going to be purchasing is the five panel hat. Um, so this is the hat there. they got at the bottom there. That's definitely going to be something I'm going to try and cop as well, which looks brilliant also. Um, let me see if I can get up on here on the preview I'm loading bada bing bada boom where is it supreme hat with the thing it's only black and white there we go this one here so as you can see this one it's got supreme written it's got supreme and it's kind of exploding font with the with the Iraq hand, um, hand style I'm not too sure if this is um I, if it, this ear snots um, thing or if this is somebody else from the Iraq crew that with this uh, hand style with the Iraq on top here written in silver um, ink which looks really really good so I'm definitely gonna get that so the Iraq mesh back uh, five panel so that's gonna be pretty dope as the kids say and then on the other bit of the Clive lab that I'm really interested in is this gremlins football shirt because I had to actually recently throw away a football shirt that I had that unfortunately was the same sort of color scheme in terms of the black, the whites and the greens. But unfortunately, I think if I'm not mistaken, this upper body was, was white. So after time, when I kept wearing it, washing it, wearing it, washing it, it just, and I was sweating in it. Sometimes the stains didn't come out and it just overall turned into like, an, maybe I washed it with, di with different fingers, I don't know. But anyway, it just got a little bit gunky looking and it got all like off whitish looking like porcelain and it just looked weird i mean so i had to basically throw it away because after one i think one day i was actually gonna go out to a rave wearing it and i put it on my bed and i went to the shower came back in the room i was like oh that looks dirty i mean like, i didn't i don't think i'd seen it properly in the light so when the kind of light hit it when i was on the bed i was like jesus christos so i had to kind of take it you know uh put it out of his patch put it out um put it out to pasture as i say so i'm thinking of getting that gremlins uh jersey Football, ice hockey. I think it's the hockey jersey, right? I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm not too familiar with US sports, so please don't kill me in the comments. But I'm pretty sure it's a hockey jersey. Um, but I'm definitely thinking of getting that also. Where that? I think I missed it, right? It was, I think it's a collab with Gremlins. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, is it, not, is it not on here? It must be on here. I'm pretty sure. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Yeah, here. My bad. So it's here. A uh, gremlin hockey jersey. Uh, it's not put. It's not. It doesn't say collaboration, but it just says gremlin. Uh, poly eyelet mesh with a with tackle twill logo, applique and embroidered patch. I love. I've said it before, and I'm. I'm. Maybe I'm in the minority here, but I absolutely love the the autism levels of their flipping product descriptions when it comes to Supreme. Right, the amount of detail they go into, like you know, slit pockets with chest enclosure, like, with zip enclosures, like God damn, man. Do you know what I mean? Chest pockets will do, my guy, but I like this. Do you know what I mean? This kind of gets me hard. I'm not going to lie. I love to see all this kind of detail. So, yeah, I'm a fan of this um, jersey. Might get that also, but I think, my, like I said, my main points of interest um, coming up this week for Supreme are definitely going to be those Iraq gloves and this and, and this uh, five-panel hat. So maybe I can get two pairs and a hat. I'll be pretty much okay with. I cannot wait and the rest of it. You know, not really that too fussed about. But, again, follow... Um, these accounts you know supreme drops and uh, they have they have all the good info people are hyped about the plaid flannel which is that one there it looks like in the comments it says this this kind of shadow flannel thing people are really getting excited about that so i think that would end up being one of the most um sold through sold out items on the entire thing going forward um but yeah let's wait and see this thursday coming up we're going to be able to see if I'm able to be lucky and cop some of that stuff and cop some of that stuff. Um, what else did I do over the weekend? Oh, over the weekend. Oh, sorry. Over the weekend, not what else did I do. Over the weekend, this is what I did. I ended up going to fold as per usual. Where else am I going to be? Um, I went there on the Friday and I had an absolute, was it the Friday? I had an absolute blast. I think it was Friday. Was it Friday? Or am I bugging out? I think it was Friday. Do I think it's Friday or was it actually Friday? Yes, it was Friday. Okay, I went to fold on a Friday. That was actually a good night. And I went to see, I went for specifically transmissions. 
right? Transmissions are a um, collective of. So, this weekend, what I get up to, I went raving. Of course, what else was I going to do this weekend? What else am I going to do? And of course, I hit my favorite club in the world. Oh no, in the world is definitely going to be Bergheim. My favorite club in the UK, Fold. And I went to a night called Transmissions. Now, they've put on some pretty decent nights over the what last few years that have been kind of going out and whatnot. And I have to kind of definitely give them a definitely a shout out because you know, I've said before, like I've done the whole promoter hustle. I've done the whole promoter passion project. I've done them all. And I know how difficult it is to put on nights from just hosting a night that you just put on on the club. That's kind of plug and play. You don't have to bring your own equipment or anything. To actually renting your own equipment, um, you know, to doing stuff outside, whatever it may be. Right? I've done it. I've done them all. Right? And I can say for sure, it's definitely one of the hardest jobs out there to get right because it's such a brutal job as well. Because the margins are really thin, and you know, mistakes are plenty, and it's a really unpredictable market. Blah blah blah. You know everything people talk about, but. There are also people out there who do it really well. And the ones that do it really well deserve some praise. Especially because I feel like the ones that do it really well, they kind of, I won't say legitimize clubs, but they give people a reason to go to those clubs because of that one special night they created. And if the club is smart, they'll usually hold on to that um, promotional, uh, that promo company, right? And basically all the club promotion company and basically have them do programming for, you know, a particular number of nights in the year, maybe have them do residencies, whatever it may be. They'll usually do that sort of thing. Or like sometimes in London, they'll just have them roaming around different venues. Maybe the venues are nicked, so and are linked behind, you know, holding companies, but, you know, it changes. But still, transmissions have definitely need to get some um, shine, I feel like, for their amount of nights that they put on. And also looking at their RA here, of the just the range of their events is something that needs to be given a lot of kind of um, heads up and a lot of kind of nodding on the head just those two nights there back to back the past ones right transmissions devious one and renee wise is one i went to and then you also you got here brika back to back with bakey all night long right so they've covered from the biggest hype of the hype to just people that are maybe some for their heads you've got another night here called dr banana presents dj perception truly madly adam pint and alfia um, you got another one here with uh, Andrew James Gustav, Sugar Free and KRN. You got another one here with um, uh, the two residents from um, what's that place called? Salon de Lama Chairs, which is um, Willikins and Ivokovic all night long. Lena Willikins and Vladimir Ivakovic. Iv, no, Ivkovic, sorry, Ivkovic. You got Peach All Night, you know, like really interesting. Like Peach All Night at Venue MOT. Imagine how good that must have been as a party, right? To see Peach play in such a small, tight, sweaty club in South London, like crazy good, right? And you got another one here, this was postponed, but that was a crazy lineup. Imagine that, Madam X back to back with Scratcher DVA. <laughs> Are you insane? That is absolutely crazy, crazy programming, like really, really good, like lineup selection, whatever that word is called, that, that people do this kind of job, right? Another one, yeah, another kind of one that I'm not too familiar with the artist here, Peter Van Hossen, Marco Shuttle and Jay Duncan. You got another one here with Julian Huxtable, who I saw at Flipping Bergheim recently, Wings, uh, Wax Wings and My Lee. Is it how you spell it? Or My L? Sorry. Um, another one that's really one for the Heads Ghost, which is a, uh, what, like a roving record store out of Berlin. Again, you know, they had a lot of uh, people attending, members that kind of said they were interested in going, but the Ghost is still, I think, a bit niche. It's definitely something for the Heads. If you don't really know about them too tough, it's hard to kind of decide to get your ticket and go to that sort of event. But they went, they flooded it. They did a good job. If I'm not mistaken, I tried to go, if I'm not mistaken, this, but all the tickets were sold out and I wouldn't, didn't want to risk going to the door and being turned away, even though I'm sure I would have been able to get in. Um, but still, um, loads of stuff, right? Loads of stuff. Even this one, E1 and Transmissions, Helena Half, VTSS, DMX Crew, and Mama Snake. Like, Mama Snake is absolutely lethal. She's really good. So anyway, they do really, really good parties. And obviously, I went to this party here, which was a devious one with... Where, um, with Renee Wise start to finish and first off Devious One I'm kind of spoiled because I've seen him 
twice now back to back once at E1 um, and then of course Rene Wise I saw him briefly in Berlin but I still wanted to get the kind of semi full experience of them two playing together and I thought it was a pretty sick and clever idea that they had them basically do what four hours each or something whatever it may have been I think it might have been less actually is it less I think it's four hours each I'm not too sure I think so anyway regardless they did a long time and they split the time equally and i think it was pretty sick to see all right them do that and i'm always gonna support these sort of lineups at a place like fold because even if you're gonna get all the hype kids coming out all the people that just jumping on the bandwagon you're still gonna get the core sort of fold contingent there making it what it is in the same way the cause did right when the court was around even though some of the lineups were a bit bait or maybe some of the lineups were a bit maybe you know maybe one that our general panels were like people general panels still went there but the what made the cause such a good vibe was the you know the core audience of people that go there week in week out or that go there every other month whatever every other day da, 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 da. and i think the same thing happens at fold so immediately the vibe in there like just let's just say the vibe inside there was probably one of the best i think people have mentioned it already i've seen some comments people saying how sick it was and let me be honest i've been to fold a lot of times i've been to fold sometimes when it hasn't been great and all the t and most of the time i think i've mentioned this on this channel you know um clubs unfortunately especially if you're running a club which must be the hardest job in the world even though i eventually want to open my own nightclub that's definitely something that i've got on my uh bucket list of um, things i want to achieve hopefully in the next few years or whatnot but for sure having a club is a thankless job because there is no way you can really 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 purposely sort of cultivate your own community it kind of has to not happen by chance but you kind of have to hope they choose you like okay cool we think you guys are legit we think you guys are doing this proper we're going to stand behind you and if you don't have a good community around you there's nothing else you can do really it doesn't matter what your lineups are saying if the community that goes to that club isn't it it's not it like you know think about places like x or y or even though I, have, I have a lot of good memories of the times i went there a lot of reason why people hate it is because in general the people that go there on the daily are the people that live and work around you know that area of flipping x or y and people generally that kind of are part of the scene that i'm in just don't vibe with that kind of group of people and maybe vice versa so it doesn't necessarily work out but fold group you know always i think bring the noise they bring the vibe they dance their fucking faces off and of course like i say many times the flipping closing of your camera or the you know you are being aware that you have a stick on your camera it just makes people lose them inhibitions just be a little bit more comfortable to just fuck around man honestly it's such a good time in there because people just don't care no one's recording you no one, no one's doing anything anyone's just trying to sweat their faces off and just dance dance and shake their arms in the air and i absolutely loved it and i have to say the really surprising thing that i thought transmission did well which i don't i don't know if it was a thing because dvs1 had a other skit another trip you had to go which i don't think that's true because maybe it's true maybe they have another trip because if he finishes at three then he can maybe get to an airport before the first flight that leaves at like six but anyway so to spoil the lead dvs1 played early which is not really something you would imagine because obviously he's a you know maybe a far more well-known or established artist than renee wise and you'd imagine in their careers you know dvs1 would probably be the headliner which means he would maybe end the night but in this rave um dvs1 actually opened and then renee wise was the one that was closing um, which I think actually gave the night a good vibe because Devious One set that set that room up really well for the Renee Wise to just come in and knock them knock those pins down. So that was pretty sick. But coming in and just hearing Devious One playing, you know, doop, 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 the the gloop gloop, the kind of like you know those kind of bloopity bloop noise that you kind of associate with a really banging um, free deck mix worthy of uh, Devious One was sick to hear and see, and just that space man to hear Devious One how kind of box off it is the i don't know what they do with the audio in there and the sound engineering i'm not a sound engineer i have nothing about that the lighting in there everything is fucking sick they have a dedicated person doing all the flipping lights and whatnot and it's just especially when you're off the flipping pingers it really does send you on another the planet mate it gets you going so good in there that's why some of the times i'm in there or most of the time i'm in there i've hardly drank like the, even this one i didn't really drink i had a couple of drinks on the way there but i didn't buy any drinks there i just was on the water or well, no alcoholic drinks you know so on the water the whole entire time because just the vibe the sweatiness of the place everyone on top of you it just really kind of adds to the night and the djs were absolutely smashing it and again devious one was absolutely phenomenal and obviously renee wise when he came on too was really really good but i think 
the interesting part about it is that I think they complement each other really well, but they were very it was very clear to hear who was who when it, when someone was playing you could feel it and of course you know it kind of helped when devious one finished we all kind of did a round of applause and stuff and everyone was screaming and shouting he got a really good reception from the crowd and just in general i think he felt the vibe that everyone was done because it must be cool and a pleasure that they come to a club like in london especially in the uk having been all over the world and maybe having been in front of a crowd where someone's just like sticking a phone in your face right and you just got the light there it's quite nice to go i must it must be for a dj coming to london to go and look at the crowd and just see people dancing it doesn't matter if this so the audience is small big or whatever just see people losing their heads and the thing that about fold is really cool if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken again maybe i'm wrong here but i think if i'm not mistaken the stage at fold is a little bit higher than the actual dance floor not that much but a little bit so i'm imagining if you're behind the decks which i haven't been yet but soon that will happen in my in my future for sure when you're behind the decks i'm pretty sure you can see all the way to the back so they have a view of everyone and the thing that's sick about fold when you go in there you usually see people who don't want to get hot and sweaty or, or get bothered or touched or you know whatever moved around they'll be standing at towards the back next to where the vj is and the vj no less all the light where the lighting guy is because um, that's usually where the coolest bit of the club is because that's where all the air conditioning fans sit and whatnot. So I wonder if you're a DJ and you're behind the decks at Fold, if you could just look and see people at the back dancing. You could just see them going crazy. And that must fill you with so much glee, so much kind of enthusiasm. Yeah, it's all right to have the, the super fan in front of you dancing and going crazy, but you get those everywhere, right? That kind of first couple of rows of people that just go straight to the front and don't move. That's sick. But I think the back where people are just going crazy, like just, you know, not even looking at you, just kind of staring at the wall, staring, at, that must be such a good feeling, man. And you saw it throughout the entire set, especially at DVS, well, DVS one set, because he came a bit earlier. And of course, you know, standard nightclub, standard London nightclub thing, they never published set times prior. So I only found out about the set times from the flipping um, WhatsApp group that I'm a part of in terms of, you know, uh, techno nights out here in London, which is a really good resource, to be honest, on there. And, um, that's the only way I found out the actual set times because before that, you know, I'd have to go there and kind of get surprised. And then Renee Wise came on and absolutely tear it up as well. Renee Wise too, big up him. He was actually on the dance floor several times while Devious One was playing, adding to the whole thing. People kind of patting him on the back and saying how much they liked him, whatever. Maybe he's just having a good time, just frolicking around and being, you know, young and successful and just popping as, as he is, like props to him but that was such a cool little move i don't sure what move but that's cool just cool to see i mean a prominent dj just actually on the dance floor um i know a lot of people on interviews say oh yeah i'm an actual raver at heart that's how i got into music no you didn't let's not lie i mean you're a producer first then you went to a dj because you know why not in it why not make an extra bit of extra bit of money if people love your tunes it makes complete sense but there's not a lot of actual people that look like they enjoy going to like which makes sense though i think if you're a dj you know for many many years i think the novelty of club nights probably kind of dies away really really quickly once you kind of do it day to day but still see Renee wise on dance was absolutely amazing and i did happen to record a little video um of course no one of the no one there and no kind of visual shots of the dj is playing there's a couple of embarrassing clips in here of my face just staring directly into the camera as you can see here and you can clearly see me kind of melting and clearly you know off the fingers actually going to another planet but i was just happy to be in it do you know what i mean hearing that like hearing devious one that system thinking yes this is what i want to hear i want to just hear him like this in this atmosphere because as good as it is to see those people play in places like Berghain, this is home court right this is the same way why i want to see freddie k play at fold in this sort of lineups soon also right this is why, you know, seeing someone like a Dr. Rubenstein here would also be good. As much as it's good to see them over there, it's good to see them here at home court because you get to actually feel the vibe in a place that you kind of can call quote-unquote home. So this is a clip that I'm going to play. Look, there's a few on here. I'm going to skip around, um, take them from the night. And, of course, uh, you shall see my sweaty face. But, again, as I said before, they usually always cover the back of your camera. This is just me for the selfie camera, just looking at myself. So, obviously, it's naughty because you don't have to take any pictures or videos at all there. But I didn't show anybody on there. It's just me with my face. I'm completely sweating. So, I'm going to pass it around a bit. So, make sure when you do go there, that you respect the rules and don't video record anybody. Because I was just doing this, like, intimately here and there. I wasn't necessarily doing this for like, the entire night. And, also, just to touch upon that before I play this, the sound on this is absolutely garbage compared to what i remember it being inside the club i don't know why you guys that go to nightclubs just stand there and literally record whole sets of your phones i don't know why you do it for maybe it's for the 
a tune ID. It's maybe it's for the cloud online. I don't know. Maybe I'm the same with the wings I'm, I'm doing isn't necessarily that much different. I'm not really too sure, but there's something really R worded about standing in a club and recording a video like that because it's never going to be the same as you heard in the club. Never. And no one else really cares about the video. I know I'm playing mine here, but no one really cares about my video, my time going to a nightclub. So recording it that whole time just doesn't make any sense to me because the quality is garbage. I've kind of definitely, you know, I've had that sort of like, whoa, man, phone cameras are not as good as your ears. What? You know, that kind of moment, but you know what I mean. So let's play the clip now. DBS1 and Renee, why is that fold? Hope you enjoy. <laughs> That's a really embarrassing lad side of me. And that's also something that a lot of people, when I went to Berlin the first couple of times, I rec I realized that's something that the more sophisticated hipster, um, chin stroker um, type fan of techno music or of dance music in general isn't a fan of. They hate all this stuff, like the whistling, the, uh, the kind of the terrace culture that's kind of coming into club nights or you know sometimes you go to like house nights um that you would maybe describe as tech house nights and you hear people like humming along to the tune that has no lyrics on it right or that has no lyrics on the tune like humming along to the bass line like just crazy shit like that right and usually a lot of those folk that are more trendy more hipster they hate this sort of stuff they completely hate you hate you hate you hate you so I don't know what it is about me when I'm having a good time. I tend to do this stuff all, you know, a lot. And um, yeah, it's just something that I do in it. What could you do? You get the drift. Um, enough of that. So that was um, Devious One and Renee Wise at Fold this past weekend at Fold, my favorite nightclub here in the UK. And I do recommend you guys go check it out if you haven't already. And also, I want to big up everybody that I bumped into at Fold who said that they've watched the channel or watched my reviews of nights over there. So thank you for those of you who said hi. Um, really do appreciate you, especially one in particular who ended up helping me out with some techno dust. Big up you. <laughs> but yeah, big up everybody that I bumped into. It was really, really cool. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I don't usually expect because, you know, I just do this for myself. I don't really care for the adulations or the recognitions and stuff that's not something i'm in this for at all in the slightest i'm super passionate about this music i'm super passionate about this scene i clearly want to get involved in my own way in terms of opening my club in the future but obviously being a dj myself and just kind of enjoying it as a consumer i've always been that kind of person jeremy you know I, mean? I don't need to be super duper involved or behind the scenes 
to enjoy it. I just love enjoying it as a punter and being super passionate about it. And clearly, um, with some of you guys, it does connect. With some of you guys, it doesn't, which is understandable too. Some of you guys hate this sort of stuff, but hey, it's my podcast and I do what the hell So yeah, big up everybody that said hi and that, you know, was just nice and whatnot. And, you know, said some nice words. Um, we exchanged some hugs, very, very sweaty hugs, myself included. I'm sorry. Um, but it is what it is. It is. Oh, yeah. Make sure if you go there, by the way, wear a short sleeve t shirt, right? Please don't go there with a long sleeve t shirt. You will die. I guarantee you. Make sure you buy a short sleeve t shirt. Even in the winter months, it doesn't matter. Buy a short sleeve t shirt because that place gets hot and sweaty. But as I said prior, the hot and sweatiness of that place actually adds to it. It actually makes the night fun or um, funner do you know what I mean it makes it more enjoyable and the fact that you have to cover your phone um, back camera and not have your thing it just makes it you don't you can't pull it out and immediately record videos no one gives a fuck anyway because it's going to be terrible because that place you need to you know embrace it flipping in there you need to basically be in there right you need to feel the sweat you need to feel the warmth of people on top of you passing through dancing you need to feel the noise like everything about it it's it's, it's really impressive to be fair what they've done over there it's a short space of time so big up everybody there so shit with the place you know they keep that place ticking and running and as it's basically it feels like it's running on autopilot i just saw a post there again on a monday it feels like mondays they kind of have these you know it's another busy week here at Fold. I mean, just churning them out. The unfolds, which they do on Sunday with all the residents and stuff and friends and family connected with the club, which I hopefully maybe in the future would have an opportunity to play at one day, um, was um, they're now doing those more regularly, it feels like. So clearly there's a demand for that on Sunday because before it felt like it was just a thing that they put on because they had a free day in a week. So why not? You know, it's a kind of it's a free hit because you're going to be, you know, you're paying for the rent anyway it doesn't matter in it you're paying for the lease whatever maybe so you might just put on something when you're not really open um and it's doing pretty well for the most part i can tell with the small community of people that have been going there since day dot um i haven't been i've never been to one unfold actually actually which is quite surprising i've been to the first ever fold party though which i'm really happy about because i can definitely see the growth of what they've been able to do but i've not been to one unfold but they've heard it's absolutely banging so all that is obviously a good sign that they're kind of in autopilot now and just smash out quality night after quality night and of course it helps that they have great partners too so you know so big up the promoters and transmissions for putting that together and just generally putting together quality nights i think if i'm not mistaken they also put together the night that i went to with um rubenstein dr rubenstein and what's his name i forgot his name that she plays with sometimes the dude with the beard really handsome good looking guy from i think he might be iranian or from tel aviv or something i forgot his name um anyway um good night great night enjoyed it had a blast um only thing i'd say is a negative for me personally was that this time because i wanted to wear some fashionable clothes let's say i decided not to go on my bike and i didn't really want to you know sweat or anything too much prior to going there so i took my ass there on um public transport and fine going there but on the way back the buses take longer, the trains take longer. So it's just, it was a bit, bit of a nightmare um, to get back home. But, you know, whatever. Innit? That's just something I have to kind of deal with. But yeah, big up everybody that's associated with that place and that you, man, are doing some great work. Then moving on, we have some news here courtesy of Mirror Fighting. Interesting news if you're a boxing fan, interesting news or if you're just somebody that's, you know, keeps an eye on flipping um, content creators and whatnot online. There's this news here. It says breaking. Floyd Mayweather at V Deji is official. So I kind of said, why don't I say his name properly? Floyd Mayweather V Deji is official for November 13th. Mayweather, hashtag Mayweather Deji, Sunday, November 13th, Coca Cola Arena, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. So clearly we're seeing um, May Mayweather's kind of long lasting or long running relationship out there in Dubai is definitely kind of extending. And he's put together this fight with Deji, obviously the brother of KSI, who's come back off a first win he did recently. There's definitely been an improvement in his boxing skill. But to go from what he's doing YouTube wise to fighting Mayweather, one of the greatest boxers ever, uh, you know, definitely someone that's got to, definitely someone's got to go in history as one of the greats is absolutely hilarious. But I think in general, it does speak to an overall um you know it does speak to it just being a really interesting time in content generation or just in content at all and just in social media influences whatever you may deem them to be youtubers and stuff because it feels like 
this is another level another stage on the kind of climb up that most youtubers have right from doing brand deals to collaborations to maybe having your own merch maybe opening your own store to maybe doing something on tv or a streaming service uh, whatever there's challenges and stuff that you do along your career that kind of every youtuber every content creator kind of ticks off and i guess after a certain point if you're a youtuber there's not there's not much else to do so the only logical step is to maybe ex, you know explore other avenues outside of youtube but also things that would work well on that platform such as boxing right because of the variety of the clips or the tri everything around boxing and you know combat sports in general works really well on things like youtube because there's a big audience for it and you can clip those things up you can send them out it's just it feels like a constant non-stop kind of wheel of content going to come out like for sure from this announcement of the fight all the way until november 13th and onward there's going to be memes especially if deji ends up getting knocked out in a weird way or if deji ends up landing a shot on on, on mayover that makes him wobble something right imagine if deji lands the equivalent of what connor landed on mayover that one uppercut that all connor fans sort of like jack off to the one that kind of made them um, uh, may have a grimace but he still kept walking forward that would be a very interesting thing to see that would definitely go viral so all those things or people just clip it and say oh did you want all those things are tied into it and i think that's that's really an interesting place to be in because i don't necessarily see these as real fights i don't think anyone does not even mayweather right the exhibition fights he does them more to kind of get paid have a run out you know show off the wares it's kind of an interesting thing because it's like a a legend in the sport someone who's the best as who's the best who's kind of rated as a the best ever especially in his weight class, essentially saying, even though I'm retired, I can still put on a show, which is something you don't see a lot of fighters do or boxers in general. Because I guess when you do retire, there's usually this understanding that you may be retired because your brain can't handle it anymore. Do you know what I mean? You're like in dire straits, so you can't really be, you know, um, boxing in the ring too tough. So you just kind of let it go. But this obviously shows if you're able to retire with maybe minimal damage, maybe with a pretty decent bank account, you could take more chances, right? You can maybe have a punt here and there and see if it works out. And clearly for me, it's been working out in a big way because people still tune into these flipping, you know, exhibition fights. He makes a bucket load of cash as he did recently with the one he did um, where I think it, I think he put the guy out in the second round and he cleared 25 mil or 20 mil, even if it's 10 mil, five mil, one mil for 25 minutes worth of work is really, crazy or oh, not 25 minutes for two rounds worth of work sorry i mean it's really insane but i like to see it in general hoping we're to see more especially for myself included like again i'm not a boxing purist so for me this doesn't really i'm not bothered i guess if you're a boxing purist then maybe you're kind of you know spitting feathers right now but i think as a ways to cut to generate content as a ways to maybe for youtubers and influencers to maybe extend their career a little bit or maybe to kind of expand into other fields and allow them to kind of you know grab onto maybe a bigger fan base whatever it may be i think these things are priceless literally priceless and as long as you take them seriously and you treat those you know platforms that you're going on or those arenas those rings those octagons those dojos those fight since whatever it may be. if you don't treat them with respect you'll be pretty much okay so i'm pretty interested to see where this goes how this happens how this rolls out um i definitely want to definitely make sure i check this out when it ends up happening um obviously on november the 13th so definitely keep your eye out for that if you are that way inclined make sure you keep your eye out for that one next on the news here i wanted to quickly touch upon which i wanted to just make a general overall point about was this news courtesy of billboard which says as follows, Megan Thee Stallion launches mental health resource website for fans. Bad bitches have bad days too. Now, for me, right, the reason why this was hilarious and I thought I wanted to make a wider point about this was because if you know anything about what's been going on with Megan and obviously Tory Lanez and the fallout from the shooting, did it happen? Or obviously, did it happen? Who actually did it? Um, a lot of kind of like finger pointing and back and forths and subs and direct lyrics and whatever it may be, right? And it's been a whole an affair that's kind of gripped the internet but not really because we're kind of all tired of it we just want them to go court and just find out what exactly happened or what the you know the closest version of the truth was and then let everyone go in their merry way now my one issue from it from the first place has always been i hated the disparity in treatment i hated the fact that it didn't feel fair that in general in a story that no one really knows the definitive truth and unless you're in that car 
that one person can basically have their career halted for a bit, not forever, but for a bit, and maybe in some places for a bit as well, especially if you consider the stuff that's happening with academics and, you know, Ebro and the stuff that he revealed that Ebro wouldn't want to put Tory Lanez on the playlist and stuff, which is essentially, quote unquote, hurting or killing his career. The thing I didn't like about it was that it felt like one person could continue thriving and essentially benefit from the kind of virality of that story from the sympathy people had for that person especially Megan and the other person has their career basically on pause and gets painted as a villain even though we have no facts or what actually happened in that car right we don't know anything we're just kind of all speculating based on the bits of information that we that's out there and interpreting police reports and cameras but we don't actually know definitively what happened and maybe we'll never find out in the courtroom but we'll probably get closer to the truth than what we've seen so far on social media and Throughout the entire time they've been going back and forth, there's been many occasions where Megan Stalin has not shown any sort of um, compassion or understanding for anybody suffering with mental health, especially when you think about the man of subtweets that have happened with friends involved. Again, I only know it's because of channels I've watched on YouTube, but there's been subtweets from friends, there's been indirects from her that's been written. Um, there's even to this day, she basically flat out denies that she even had any sexual relationships or sexual relations with flipping Tory Lanes. Many, many different things. Like, I'm not, am I saying flipping, not admitting you have a body is a, is a form of mental mental abuse or is, is basically, maybe I am saying that, I don't know, but it, it, it doesn't matter. I just feel like that unfairness in the response or in the actions that followed that thing were just so unfair that it just, you know, it was kind of hard to watch in real time. But then I realized quite quickly when I was watching it and analyzing it and ranting about it, life isn't fair. Life is never fair. And then the overall point I wanted to make about this whole thing about making certain launching a mental health resource website despite her not really being the best example of somebody that treats mental health seriously it's only something that she i would think like some people do with most mental health issues where they basically um use it as a crux to excuse their poor behavior or use it to hide behind or use it to justify whatever thing that they want to do or use it for them to kind of avoid any criticism too i've got mental health issues so no one can basically tell them about themselves or whatnot so it's all kind of full of crap which brings me into our last point this headline for me just proves that most people are full of shit most people are full of shit but i think with us general punters with us general customers with us civilians as comedians like to call us right especially the la ones what thing separates us between famous people or rich people or well-known people or people with clout is that we can't really get away with being full of shit we're going to get called out, whether it's our friends, whether it's society on the street day to day, whether it's people that we work with, whatever. Someone's going to definitely call us out on our shit. But if you're a celebrity or someone that's well known or an artist or an influencer or a politician, whatever it is, or something that people, you know, you have adoring fans and maybe some haters, whatever it may be the ratio, right? There's still, um, you still get told, you st- you still don't get told about yourself. I said yes. You still don't get told about yourself if you're a celebrity, because you're surrounding yourself usually with yes men, people that are going to feed your ego, people are going to satiate your need for more, 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 more. You know, we can have people in there that are going to call out, call your bluff, and if you do, you're going to put the money outside and not really on your inner circle. So I think a lot of that kind of bears fruit in it. But it's just funny the things you can get away with when you're really well known or people kind of sympathize with you or people like you wherever maybe you can get away with absolute murder but i think as a regular civilian you don't really you know you can't to a certain point you can't really get away with it you have to have some think redeeming about yourself something that kind of doesn't really speak to this sort of stuff that people can kind of rally behind but i just thought it was hilarious seeing that headline on billboard about the whole thing but let's read a bit of the article here she was fantastic in this picture, by the way, taking that way to 2022 Vanity Fair. She was really good there. And it goes, if Megan Thee Stallion can have bad days, anyone can. That's why the 27-year-old rapper revealed a website for her fans to full of mental health resources from therapy information to emergency hotlines for entitled the bad bitches have bad days too. It's okay. What about the bad bitches that you and your friends were bullying and subtweeting during the backlash of all this stuff, right? What happened to them? What was the best friend's name again? Um... Was it Kelsey, right? That was the one, right? What, what about her mental health when she was going through all that stuff? No one really cares about that. What about Tori's mental health? If it comes out that she lied about the entire thing, what about his mental health for the whole affair? She pointed a finger and basically said he was the one that shot her. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. It's all sort of nonsense. But that's a pretty, I'm just looking at this, like this headline here at the bottom. That's a pretty deep lineup for an SNL, isn't it? Are they, are they going to be all in it together? SNL hosting Kendrick, SNL hosting Kendrick Lamar, Will Smith. 
Oh, Kendra Manor Willow or musical guest lineup. Okay, cool. I'm, in, I'm into that. Megan Stallion to make SNL debut. I was like, okay, imagine it. Megan Stallion, Kendrick, Lamar, and Willow on SNL. That's pretty nice. It continues anyway. It says, um, Bad Bitches Have Bad Days 2 compiles four categories of resources free therapy organizations, mental health outlines, resources directories, and LGBT. QI plus community resources. Each category features a menu of useful links to external uh, mental health websites, many of which are resources. Uh, sorry, I focus on serving BIPOC and those in the LGBT plus QA community. Bounce back like bad bitches always do. Reads a quote based on the site. Hotties reads um, what appears to be the message from the Plan B artist shared on Twitter by a fan. You know your, you know you how much mental health means to me. So I created the hub of resources that help you when you need to get a hand. Um, head to bad bitches lab bad this too and now check it out love y'all so much everyone loves each other everyone has bad days um yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know so let, let's see let's see how that pops off but you know i just think in general you know when your actions when your when your words are match your actions you kind of have to get called out on some of this stuff but you know i think in general people don't care because they decide who they like and then they make the excuses for who they like and then they bury the ones that they don't and it just is what it is so apart from that what else have i got here on the list that i wanted to talk about give me a minute to explore yes we've got another club news bit i want to talk about here it is courtesy of mix mag featuring origins another really good um roving uh club promoter contingent collective group um who put on some really good nights across the uk not just in london and they are celebrating their 10 year anniversary soon with a stretch of shows which i'm really excited to check out because you have mixed maggots says here the it says 225 shows on from its launch jesus christ 225 shows in 10 years is nuts the party is hosting a series of events celebrates landmark um there's 12 nights in the day diary uh, taking place at current homes with moles comedia plus night tales night tales loft village underground cortical studios fold and the pickle factory imagine being a roving group of promoters and you have some excellent communication relationships with all these great clubs do you know what I mean that's really really cool man i don't know anything about moles or comedia i'm guessing those are the ones outside of london but i'm familiar with every single one of these ones that i've actually been to stretching from november 12th um, through to December 17th those announced so far play including Rod Dox Rubenstein of course who I actually saw at an Origins night in Mixed Garage I think back in the day Dan Shake is playing um, Angel Delight Octa Octa and Sally C Origins is still yet to announce future further artists sorry who will be playing which venue on which date but have revealed that the debut party to celebrate the part the birthday will take place on Night Tales Loft on November 12th you don't be actual flex I know they always do this anyway, but imagine if, they, if you know, Origins did their opening night to celebrate their birthday, and it just had it be no, no, no guest, no lineup, just come. If, if you, if you're a fan, or if you like what we do and you've seen it online and you trust us, just come, and I promise you we'll deliver you a good night and still book the people you want to book, but just don't tell any people. That'd be pretty sick if they did that as an opening night thing. But I guess you know the amount of money these guys put into nights and stuff, especially hiring these spaces, is probably not the best thing. So. I can understand that. So continue to your origin still yet to announce that all shows in typical origin style will be curated and played by those closely involved in a long running party with its crew thanking partners for its lengthy success over the years. Um all right, this is the okay, this is the thing. The caption here, which let's actually play a little bit of the clip here that, that they have on Instagram, see what this is saying. <laughs> Okay, some corporate music. Let's continue that. Oh, that's about right press, but yeah, let's continue. Um, the caption says as follows: What a better way to celebrate a man of stretch of shows than Origins Way? Sign up for a chance to win. Obviously, you're gonna do that if you want to on the Instagram. But the main caption says as follows: um, Ten shows. T- sorry, ten years on. 225 shows later this autumn we celebrate 12 parties maybe more over five weeks in two cities staying true to what we love in the venues that we love thank a um, huge thank to everybody who's made this series possible from the artists to the venues to the agencies and everybody who's got uh, who got us to who got us this unbelievable landmark there's no finishing line just the next dance and i just love that i think they've got it actually here on the background of their um ra promoters page right there's no finishing line just a, just there's no finishing line just the next dance some things there but yeah they've done some crazy good events back in the past that i've been to um they've done some 
Oh, okay. The last collaboration with Junction. I didn't really know that. Too tough. The last few parties I went to from them, again, like I said, Dr. Rubenstein and what's his name? Uh, Roy Perez at Mixed Garage was a real standout. Um, what else I can see on here that I've been to recently? Da, 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 da. Let's see here. Midland. No, I didn't go to Midland one in Fold. Maybe I did actually. Did I go to that? I'm not really too sure. I think I might have gone to that. I'm not really too sure. Maybe I bought tickets and I didn't actually check it out. I'm not really too sure on that one. But there's, yeah, there's some decent nights here that I've been to in the past with Oranges. Like I said, I trust them wholeheartedly. Um, so for sure, I would be interested to see if they would ever do something like that in that current party. Just do the first party, no lineup. Do you trust us, yeah or nay? And then see where I'll go on from there. But again, like I said, you know, they spend too much money booking these great artists to come to, all the way to London or all the way to the UK to play. You know, you can't really be risking having them have played no lineup. And I'm guessing some promoters also are quite stupid picky about that kind of thing anyway and they're gonna only allow certain people to do that sort of stuff and maybe if you're up and coming in person I don't really know you know what I mean like some people are like that when it comes to those sort of things but hopefully it's a bit different um let's uh, continue here and talk about this this just happened actually so England just played them um, Germany and we drew 3-3 free free. um last game of the Nations League we already got you know relegated from that so it wasn't actually going to mean anything anyway we we're going to advance in the competition but still the talking point for me for the most of this is definitely have been Harry Maguire's performance especially in that second half those two mistakes that led to basically Germany getting a two goal lead which we ended up clawing back and leading for a short period of time and then you know they got the equalizer tools the end with Kai Havertz tapping in a rebound from the goalkeeper who probably should have had a little better but it was a pretty hard shot to kind of you know gather in your hands because it bounced right in front of him and hit his chest before kind of landing on Kai Havertz's feet and he did the business but Harry Maguire's performance wow that was what you call a horror show and as much as I like to go in on him I would start off first of all and say that really wasn't his fault because he should have never been picked in the first place I think now we know the importance of having some level of club form going into uh, crunch games like that especially if you're just going to be someone that's going to come in from the cold it might be better off if you're like hey imagine you're a player playing for your club team and you're just not performing for them but then the manager of your national team knows you and knows how to get certain things out of you. So maybe they might trust their judgment and their skill in coaching and people management to be like, you know what, just come. Come anyway, I'm going to pick you um, and I'm going to unlock the animal in you. And then you're going to go back to your club and told a different person. They're going to be like, oh my God, who's this guy? But that didn't happen for Maguire, man. It didn't happen for him at all. Um, he looked shaky as hell with players running at him. The Musiala thing was probably the worst, I think. I think I mentioned it prior. The first goal he conceded, which was a penalty, right? And he took down the player inside the box. I think that was worse because from what I remember looking at it, Musiala didn't even do that much. Um, I don't think the step over was that great. The shimmy wasn't that great compared to what he can usually do, right? That kid's an absolute beast. I think he's like 19, right? Um, crazy. Grew up in the UK, but went and lived in Germany, I think, for a bit. And now he's basically a German citizen. But in general, I think his family is actually German. I'm not sure how it worked out, but, you know, he's actually, you know, used to play in England. There's pictures of him in in old England tops or whatnot. But the interesting part I thought was that that wasn't even the best skill I've seen him do. That was kind of just basic, right? But it still sent flipping Harry Maguire to the shop so much so that his leg inadvertently just, you know, about him probably wanting to trip the kid over, which was flipping hilarious. You know what I mean? Seeing that. But... The other mistake as well was also equally, maybe equally, because I thought the first one was worse because, you know, he got skanked or he got dropped by a kid that wasn't really doing that much dropping. But I thought the other one was even worse, personally, for me. That was even worse because it looked like he tried to redeem himself, doing something that he's clearly not good at in terms of dribbling. That whole idea that he comes out from the back wall is bullshit too. Um, he's a big lad. Harry Maguire from what I've seen on TV and just from him watching him playing football, he's probably closer to, you know, 6-3, 6-5, then he is flipping 6-1. The guy is an absolute unit, so it does make a lot of sense why that whole coming out from the back thing and dribbling with, you know, his size 13 feet is not going to work. And it clearly didn't work. As soon as he got rubbed off the ball, I was like, oh my God, no Maguire, no Maguire, because he didn't start running really quickly. Someone else started running because they kind of sensed what was happening, but she just kind of held back, maybe because she was intimidated, I'm not sure what happened. But 
in general, those two mistakes really cost England and they could eventually have lost to a loss in general, but they didn't, right? We ended up drawing the game. But if you listen to the commentary, you would never guess so. Especially especially if you would never guess who the culprit was. They really went out of their way to not mention him at all until they got to analysis of the actual goal and people still kind of pussyfooted around it until, um, bless his heart, flipping Jermaine Defoe decided to lend in some, some lend his opinion and he actually said the real when it comes to Harry Maguire. He didn't actually kind of try and sugarcoat it for the sake of it because the guy's flipping 29 years old he's the captain of Man United still officially and people are putting baby gloves on him and not letting him really play poorly or not play poorly so he continues says here um, um, what do you say here yeah he said this is Jermaine Defoe he says you look at the goals and they were avoidable he said on Channel 4 silly mistakes to give the ball away and then you give the ball away penalty and uh, individual mistakes that for some reason this always seems to be him um, he says Maguire's inclusion is out to the starting lineup um, against Italy and Germany over the past three days has been one of the main point, talking points of international break. The defender's um, name was booed when it was read out ahead of kickoff on Monday with some fans clearly feeling that he shouldn't be in the team based on his current form. He also jeered during the game, especially when things were going downhill, looking at the back and nothing. So that's the thing with him also. It's always been the issue. Just He's refused to acknowledge how he might look to certain people. It's just wild. It's just literally wild. One of the things that kind of just blows my mind about the guy. But yeah, I thought Jermaine Defoe definitely brought the noise in terms of kind of holding him to account. And so the follow is funny one because I like that. I said he's on the top of the show. There's been a lot of negativity around him and you want him to play well because he's done to one well tournaments for England, of course. But it's not going to happen anytime soon, mate. He's a, a void, He's devoid of being able to receive any constructive creative feedback unless it's tied to money or something. He doesn't listen to it in the slightest. But, you know, what can you do? And again, Harry Maguire is probably going to end up you know still being at the club for another five years we still haven't managed to get rid of flipping what's his name um i don't know i forgot what the kid's name oh phil jones that's the one we still have managed to get rid of phil jones so phil jones isn't going anywhere and he's english he's meant to be an english lion or whatever it may be right we're definitely not going to really get rid of um flipping Majigi, harry Maguire anytime soon it's not happening um and then the next one we talk about briefly as well which i thought was hilarious <laughs> was this clip courtesy of uh, Taylor Rooks and it posted the following her sitting down with uh, Jimmy Butler and um, I thought this was hilarious because if I'm not mistaken this might be the first time she saw Jimmy Butler up close and personal wearing those fake dreads that he recently got installed which he so far hasn't been shameless about it he's been promoting them heavy um, on his Instagram and whatnot which is quite wild but this is definitely an American thing isn't it I think so an American black thing because I don't think you would ever see this level of prominent rapper musician deciding to get fake dreads in their hair or extension whatever maybe that's not really necessarily a thing i think you see for sure i think it's definitely something more reserved to the the eccentrics or the people that are living the 0.0.0000.9 life you know what i mean but this is this is a quick clip of taylor roots interviewing um what's his name jimmy butler sorry and basically not being able to handle herself looking at his braids one minute she's like is he future do I want him? And that's when she's thinking, he's thinking, mm, I mean, life's good. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. She's busting, the, she can't stop laughing. She's the longest time. Keep the so laughs to much, yourself. So much to discuss. <sighs> How are, are you? Are you okay, Jimbo? man? Yo, you got you got a serious problem. You got serious... nah, nah. Let's you go back. Do. Let's go back. It's the head touch for me. It's the head touch. So much to discuss. That's the one, right? Because the... <laughs> yeah, appreciate you. And I, and I think this is the, I think this is like the pre-taping when they're like you know running through the mic checks. Hey, how, how are you doing? Exchanging pleasantries. But someone just pointed this out on Twitter. But imagine having fake dreads and having no beard. So he cut like you know usually you'd imagine the look that you meant to have when you have flipping dreadlocks of that nature, especially a man of Jimmy Butler's age, is that you kind of tie it in with the flipping beard, right? Give yourself a real kind of um, ragamuffin you know rastafarian look right you want to give yourself that actual vibe of the entire thing and also he looks he looks great in bits 
or with a bit or with a little this little thing that I have I think that's what Jimmy Butler had right if I'm not mistaken but I don't know I'm not really sure but yeah he looks nuts let's just let's not say anything else he looks nuts but I also think you have to have supreme levels of confidence in yourself right especially as a black dude to go out there and get fake dreadlocks because for some reason we've been black um with the you know with men in hair and whatnot, it's definitely seen as a kind of thing people look down on. Girls can do it, but guys can't. Guys, it's not something to. If you're gonna do it, you, you don't. You don't. You don't exactly be proud of it and start doing photo shoots like he did, or maybe it's it was a smart idea because he got in front of it. You know what I mean? And clearly he's enjoying it. He loves the fact that he has his hair in his head. It's not all fake because I'm sure some of it is sort of like sewn into his actual dreads, which he already had. But I guess they weren't growing to the rate that he wanted it at. And, you know, he's a multi-millionaire basketball player. He can do whatever he wants. So he got that went out there and got some fake dress put in. And now he's really, really happy. But it's just hilarious that <laughs> he has this. Like I said, you have to be really confident or be insanely rich to make this work. I don't think there's any ones in between. It really isn't. Because imagine all the kids in school that used to get bullied for relaxing their hair to make it straight. Imagine just turning up to school one day and you just got a full head of dreads. Like, what am I meant to do with this information? You know what I mean? I'm, you're going to get ripped to pieces. You know what I mean? You're going to get. I'll start, Taylor. I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. Keep the so lies much, to yourself. So much to discuss. <sighs> <laughs> How are, are you? Are you okay, Kimbo? man? Yo, you got you got a serious problem. You got you do. Something's wrong with you. Man. I cannot. She's literally crying. I'm crying now, messing up my makeup. Oh, hilarious, man. But big up Jimmy Butler, man. But look at that face, man. I honestly, only an American black dude can get away with that shit. I swear to God. And it, not all of them get away with it because people in the comments are roasting, innit? Don't be, don't be shocked, right? Even in Taylor Rooks' comments. One thing to have the faux locks, but no facial hair either. She can't with the dreads, LOL. Obviously, someone coming in with a horny tweet there. Um, let's see some more comments. Like, people are roasting him, do you know what I mean? They're not, it's not exactly been the most kindest thing ever in the world there. As time goes on, oh, no, 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 continue here. It's not that funny. But yeah, you get the vibes in that. I think you mostly get the vibes of this regard. But yeah, Jimmy Butler, man. One absolute legend. I swear to God, one absolute legend. <laughs> Moving on from that, I want to quickly touch upon this. I thought I, I, I thought I should mention and break the news to you. I think there is something about marketing, and there's also something about um, consistency or just seeing something in your face long enough, especially if you're somebody that already likes the brand in general. Um, you like the designer, you like the world that they've created, you love the store, multi-brand store, you love everything about it, right? I bumped into the designer outside of their shop and spoke to their husband for a briefly, uh, for a brief second, you know, exchanged some pleasantries, said how much of a fan I was and kept it moving. And, you know, since then I've always had a respect, immense respect for this designer, immense respect for her business partner, immense respect for what she means to fashion, um, interviews, you know, views on fashion, views on the world, views on creativity, young people, branding, e-commerce, conflict, you know, between that, because there's clearly a conflict between, you know, this designer and the partner that she's with in terms of what they're doing with their e-commerce platform, what they're doing with their stores, the tension behind it because that person hates the internet, all this stuff I'm a big fan of, right? And I have to be honest, like seeing stuff a lot makes a difference because I'm seriously considering, seriously considering getting a pair of play Com de Garçon Converses. I know, I know. I'm way too cool for them. I'm probably way too old for them. I'm probably way too big for them. I understand. But I've seen these things so often now, especially in the last year or so. These have turned into like, I don't know if you guys remember, but in the UK, we had this weird trend where for, for, for like every other year, all the girls and, you know, all the kind of bad bees that you'd see around the town and whatnot, there'll be a particular shoe that they would have that would be the shoe of the season. One time it was Vans, Skate Highs, then it was Vans, Old Schools, then it was Air Force Ones, White Ones. Then I think it comes, oh, and then Hirachis also had a moment in the sun where all the girls were into Hirachis and buying them in different colours. Now, previously it was like Air Jordan Ones, but not Highs, like some mids as well. That's when you see girls, you know, 
especially coming back from like Liverpool Street Station wearing Jordan Mids horrendous shoes and I think if she, you should only wear flipping highs if you can't wear highs wear lows and even lows I fucking hate but you see loads of girls wearing mids and um, now it seems like everybody's kind of moved into when the play comedy goes on Converse and I've got to be honest I love them I've got a soft heart. I've got a soft place. There's a little hole in my heart, you know, no pun intended, for these comedy guys on play converses. But surprisingly, they are really expensive. I did not know they were that that much. Now, this is the reason why I think they were so expensive because I I thought everyone I saw wearing them, I just thought they wouldn't necessarily spend £130 on a pair of Converse's, but I guess the prestige around Converse's, or the prestige around Comme des Garçons, and the prestige, obviously it's not Comme des Garçons mainline, it's obviously it's play Comme des Garçons, but still, the fact the prestige around it, the fact that it's got this massive, you know, logo, not logo on the side, the fact that it's a Converse, you know, people are already down with and kind of, you know, um, uh, it's having its moment in the sun as well at the moment makes sense but one favor pair of converses is wild considering what i paid for mine i've got a couple of collaboration ones but talking about collaboration ones as well i have to give denim tears a lot of credit too because i wasn't necessarily a fan of converses at all i didn't necessarily wear them at all because i just assumed they wouldn't fit fit my foot or they wouldn't look good on me wherever it may be but then when the com the cause sorry when the converses um featured denim tears eventually come out that's when my um kind of thinking behind all of that changed right let me see if i can find it here uh converse my thinking behind those converse has changed completely because i was able to have my own pair that i wore that i've worn religiously for a long time now and i've got them in a size that actually fits me in like a 10.5 that i don't usually ever wear right i usually always kind of try and purchase a uk 10 and take out the insole because that's kind of my shoe size and but but then obviously i've got one shoe one foot longer than the other in terms of my left foot so if i if i would have got a 10 it would have been too tight but now these 10.5s i have i can wear them everywhere basically i think they're 10.5 they might even be smaller they might even they might, they might even be bigger they might be like a uk 11 actually not too sure but i've worn them a lot these um denim tears uh converses that he did right he's got them in a the low and a high and they were really well done obviously they've got the um they've got the stripes on them that are familiar or similar to the flag that david hammond's um the famous artist kind of put together and they kind of obviously adorned the top of those shoes and obviously i would have preferred i'm not sure actually I've, i think i've got the laces somewhere they i would have preferred to switch the laces and put the orange or the i think they're white laces in the shoe but i can't actually find my spare laces in them but these are the reasons why i'm actually into converses in the first place i would never be into wearing converses even though i think the 70s look really good and i think in general converse do a really good job of retroing their kind of core models and making them to spec which is why i also think or uh, you know i've always had this belief that nike just make up excuses when it comes to retros of why they get them so bad and why there's no consistency and why they look nothing like the vintage og models that we all kind of wank over and get excited over that we see on youtube or that we see on ebay or that we see features on people's accounts and stuff like they don't and, and somehow converse have managed to find a way to reverse engineer like og shapes and kind of put them out to the public. Do you know what I mean? They've done them so consistently over the years that it's now become a whole thing. Like these 70s converse that people like and the other ones, you know, which are the maybe quote unquote regular GRs that people like. But obviously the for me, this shape is really um, something. I think it kind of gives it a bit more of a substanti substantial kind of feel on the foot. Also like, you know, he produced this also. I think this was kind of, was it because of, um, I forgot the conversation around this. I think it may be because Converse were deciding not to put them out with the flag. I don't know. There's something around why he posted the the actual mock-up of the shoot. So I forgot what it was, but, you know, it was there somewhere. But, yeah, all of it is good. All of it is sick. Big fan of them. And, yeah, I'm really seriously considering getting a pair of Play Com de Gans or Converse just because of how well or how how much I've been enjoying wearing these um, Dead and Tears Converse. So if you see me in a pair of Play um converses please do not be upset please do not be angry at me or whatever it may be just understand that i'm doing this for you <laughs> i'm doing this for the culture you know i wouldn't be doing this otherwise if it wasn't for that but i really do enjoy them i really do want to pair i'm not going to lie possibly you know maybe switch them up and get maybe a polka dot color because i know most people like to get the 
you know, the one with the heart, you know, towards the back heel that's kind of resting, you know, underneath the midsole. And also this white kind of off-white color seems to be the most popular color I see people wearing there on a daily basis. But that polka dot one, you don't really see people too much wearing too much. And this one with the red outsole is probably not something you see worn too much either, which is pretty nice as well, to be honest. But yeah, that polka dot one might have to be mine, I'm not going to lie. That with the reverse and the kind of navy, that would be something I'll definitely end up copying. I think coming up very very soon but again maybe I'm bugging out maybe I'm spending too much time around certain people I'm not too sure if that's the case please let me know in the comments down below or not keep it yourself because I don't need to crush my heart <laughs> then of course we have this news which I think is sick this is courtesy again of Supreme Drops and it features Offset wearing the Supreme and Yoji Yamamoto um, leather biker suit thing in the rain at Rolling Loud last night um, or the other night um, in New York. I think there's reports of like torrential rain happening over there in New York at the moment. And this man still wore, you know, a very covetable, a very expensive fucking outfit, you know, with the Supreme ski goggles, with the Supreme gloves from last season that I didn't end up getting, the batting gloves he's got, which I'm actually, I'm on that much to um, resell. I think not so much shit, they were like 70 or 100. No, maybe 100. They were 70, definitely in the 100 mark. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, they're the Supreme and um, Vanson and Yoji Yamamoto Lever. Is it Vanson? Or just Supreme and Yoji, maybe just Supreme and Yoji might not even be Vanson, not be too sure, but it doesn't matter. So, actually, check, let me just double check this is it Supreme and Vanson or is it Supreme and Yoji? Or is it Supreme Yoji Vanson? Let's see, or is Vanson now you know connected with Supreme in a way where there's no real delineation between the two? I'm not too sure. I guess the Supreme store will tell us all the answers that we need from this. Let me see if I can see it on here. Where is it? Always oh, miss these things. Jacket, 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 jacket. Where is it? Huh? Did I miss it again? I think I did, didn't I? Where is it? It's not this. That's Jeff Hamilton. It's not that. It's not. Is it that? It's not that. Where is it? Why am I so blind? Am I missing it here? Is someone shouting at me through the screen? It's up there. Look up. Turn left. I can't see it anywhere here. Oh, my bugging. I'm scrolling down past nits and stuff. I can't. Still can't see it. Hmm. Maybe I am bugging. Where is it? It's not here at all. Or is it down here somewhere? Maybe it's down here somewhere. I don't think so. No, it isn't down here somewhere. Why would it be up there somewhere? Let me quickly chase again. I'm definitely bugging out, aren't I? Because I can't see it at all here. It's hurting my eyes. It's going to drive me crazy, this. Where is this fancy thing? Jackets. Let's just go this. I think I'm bugging out. I think my eyes are broken and I'm bugging out. Okay. No Vanson I don't see here. Maybe it's just not featured on here anymore. Did they pull it? Supreme Vanson Lever. Okay, it's not Yoji. Okay, maybe it's not on here. Maybe it's on the... Maybe I'm, I'm confusing it. It wasn't on the preview, was it? It was on the news. That's what I'm, that's what I'm confusing this about. Absolute ding-dong. So, yeah, there we go. Supreme Yoji. So, yeah, it's not Vanson at all. It's just Supreme and Yoji. Um, it says here official collaboration. Okay, so why does it say okay? It, it's just, it is a Vanson, but it's obviously, I guess maybe the main club. I don't know. Maybe Vanson produced the leather jacket for Supreme, so technically it's not really a collaboration because they were going to make the jacket anyway. And you're just, I don't know. Whatever the case is, um, what you would call it? Offset wore it at Rolling Loud. It looks fucking banging. Um, I think it's an extra extra floss because he's wearing such an expensive, covetable jacket and an outfit in general in the rain. I think it looks ten times better worn and broken in, especially if he wears this maybe a few more times or even just he puts it in his archive. This will be a sick bit of you know an outfit to kind of look at and say yeah this is why i wore my kind of solo set at rolling loud which might be his first solo set ever that he's done at rolling loud too which is a pretty good look because you'd imagine you know a, a festival or concert at rolling loud would always be booking migos as a group and not necessarily them kind of individual especially if you're not quavo so the fact that they booked him is pretty sick and then the other thing that I thought was amazing too was the addition of the boots so because you can kind of see here peeking for me, this is a grail. These, I think, if I'm not mistaken, are from Balenciaga Fall Winter 2017. I'm going to get it up on here and search and see if I'm right about this. 2017. Um, for, is it Fall Winter 2017? I think so. Yeah, it is. I got it right. Holy moly. I got it right in one. It's Balenciaga Fall 2017. 
that's how I know I'm really about this life. I really am about this life. I really am um, in this thing. So it's 2017 um, for menswear. Not ready to wear. I clicked the wrong one. And this is a grail of mine, like legitimately a grail from that Balenciaga collection. These amazing motorbike boots. And oh, that's also the collection. Okay, that's why I have this grail. It's also the same collection where we saw the Balenciaga Triple S's debuted, right? Still a shoe that I think is really amazing. I remember I saw, who was it? I think I saw a video from like Bliss Future. I think a family, I didn't watch it, but the video was like, oh, why do all these like um, trendy, lame sneakers like one hit one i don't know something like that and it was like he had a triple s in the picture i was like a triple s i don't think was you can categorize it as one of those lame training sneakers that didn't really last like the feelers and whatnot that came out everyone all the italian girls were wearing not really you can't really mark it in the same thing because i think that silhouette that shape that bulkiness ended up setting trends for loads of other companies that are still eating off that now you know, Balenciaga don't really push the tip rest that much anymore. I mean, it's all silent in store to like, you know, Middle Eastern kids and me, right? But for the most part, no one really wears triple S's anymore. They wear other things. But still, that that those boots that um, what's, your, what's His Face has, has, are from 2017 Fall Winter Balenciaga. And these are legitimately a grail of mine. I remember I saw a picture of Lucas Sabat wearing a pair. Uh, I remember I saw a picture of... Um, What's her name? Toxia. Have, have you, I forget how you pronounce her name. Tox, Toxica. I forgot. She's like a um, reggaeton artist, um, Latin American artist who is now in a relationship, I think, with Madonna or something. And she had a pair on also that I saw randomly a picture of her in a bed. I think it might have been the green ones. I was like, how the hell did she get a pair of those? I'm not sure if she's into fashion or if she just managed to just get them. I'm not sure. But she's got a pair. Yeah, so these Balenciaga biker boots are just insane, like ridiculously good. So 2017, do you know what I mean? Like Offset is absolutely dripping. I think the other colorways maybe didn't come out. I don't remember seeing these Bumble, Bumble, um, Bumblebee type colorway with the yellow and black out, but they look really, really sick. So yeah, so big up Offset for that absolute barnstorming of an outfit. It made my real head turn when I saw him wearing them, especially when I saw his angle. I thought, oh my God, those are my grails. Oh my God, my fucking grails, the Balenciaga boots, the Balenciaga biker boots, like, oh, I'm all over them, man. This legitimately makes my pee, pee hard. So big up Offset for making my pee, pee hard. However sus that sounds, I do not care. Big up Offset. And then of course, we've got some pretty sick video of him actually performing here at Offset in the rain. Um, offset in the rain, sorry, rolling loud, and it looks sick. It actually adds to the actual whole thing. I swear to God, it does. Um, these sort of performances are what really turn people even to being diehard fans of yours, especially if they've been in the rain waiting for you, and you actually come out and perform, or the rain starts in the middle of your set, and you still perform anyway, and the the, the energy is out off the roof. Like, come on, man, you can't you can't go wrong, brother. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Let's go back again. Let's go back again. Loving it, man. Even if he's singing a song, you know, with his former flipping group bandmates who don't necessarily like him anymore, it's still fucking sick. Part of his legacy as well, isn't it? So it is what it is. But yeah, that was a an amazing performance. Loved every bit about it. Loved every bit about it. And in this final video here of him walking through the crowd, this is Michael Jackson moments. I love my fans because you know he's obsessed with Michael Jackson as much as anybody would be. And him walking through here, hugging all his fans, high fiving them after that sweaty rain field performance must have felt amazing too the girl absolutely losing her mind the offset it was pretty cool i love that yeah, i mean like everyone's got super fans everyone has them and it's good that artists get to meet them in real life i think it's one thing when people are sending you you know merch and letters and stuff i think when you get to see them in real life and they legitimately look like they 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 consume only you content and listen to only you all the time like you're literally their fucking you know the you literally their beatles whatever it may be this is pretty sick to see Oh, 
she's crying. <laughs> Yeah, big up also, man. I'm, I'm rooting for him, man. He's somebody that no one really in the group took seriously. I think similar to maybe Takeoff. Everyone thought Quavo was the Beyonce of the group. It didn't necessarily work out for him solo. Maybe he didn't really want to do it, so I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I'm rooting for Offset. I am. I'm rooting for him. I don't care. I'm rooting for the guy. Anyway, moving on. I want to. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this because we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this. And then I'm going to kick off so the next one I wanted to talk about here that I thought was really interesting was this this happened just recently right and there's tears where is it on my thing come on you absolute cretin are you here there it is yeah we got it up on the screen where is it no it's not there why isn't it there where is it why can't I find you there you are you're here so recently um just actually the other day there was the Burberry spring 2023 show that happened here at London Fashion Week. I think at the time of me recording this or when you listen or hear this, it shall be the Paris Fashion Week, which of course is the premiere, the creme de la creme when it comes to Fashion Week. So already I've seen a few of my um, Fashion Week, um, or assume my fashion Twitter friends online essentially saying, hey, I thank God Paris Fashion Week is happening because Milan Fashion Week is a bit of a hit and miss affair. New York, London, sometimes hit and miss, but the real big dogs, the real sort of like creme de la creme, the real sort of like heavy hitters are definitely during Paris Fashion Week and everyone comes out for it. Menswear shows as well, all that good stuff, innit? Or sort of even menswear showrooms, all that good stuff. So that aside, um, Burberry obviously was showing and Ricardo Tishi, you know, being the designer over there, the creative director, whatever it may be. Um, it's been a bit difficult to watch. I'm not going to lie, especially somebody like myself, who's been a big fan of Ricardo Tishi, especially from when I kind of knew about him from when the, he was working at Givenchy and the legendary stuff that he created there at his time in Givenchy, the legendary moments in pop culture from the Rottweiler stuff to the, you know, to the massive, um, septums and whatnot to just the casting in general with using like actual with using guys that look athletic to me anyway to the eye maybe nowadays they don't look as much but at that time those guys look like crossfitters because you know models at that time think about Hayley Slamane at Saint Laurent they were all very skinny and wafy looking but you know Ricardo Tishi really kind of popularized that trend of having those big burly sort of like muscular type road kind of looking boys who you'd only see in adverts for like cp or stone island but he kind of used them in his runway and they looked always really amazing and the ladies clothes look great especially some of the more feminine presenting stuff like the skirts and the kilts having a guy that actually looks like he runs actually looks like he doesn't miss leg day wearing those things it kind of sets off a little bit different and i'm just been a fan of that overall um but i should have sure i should have sure I sort of saw, I sort of saw, I sort of saw, I sort of saw the warning sign. Sorry, when uh, Ricardo Tishi did that Nike collab, when he did those Nike collabs with those mid-high Air Force Ones like things, I think I should have saw the the light. Okay, this guy may not be who I think he is, and this might be like the one thing that everyone does. Like some see, some creative, some people have the ability to put out one thing or just do one thing consistently well for a short period of time. But then when they try to do something else, suddenly the magic isn't there anymore. Maybe that's what happened to Ricardo Tishi. Maybe he was really good or his role in life was to kind of present what he presented at Givenchy at that time. Um, set pace, influence stuff. Obviously what he done with them, Jay-Z and Kanye West with Watch the Throne with the album cover was sick. Um, the outfits that Kanye wore during the shows were sick. All that was good. He inspired people to create whatever. He, the Rottweiler tees were so coveted for a while. Hair and Presser did a flip on them also. Like loads of good stuff came out of the back of that, right? Many other cultural moments that I'm obviously missing. Um, there was adverts of him with the, with the Rottweilers um, covered in blood as well that I seem to remember. He had that epic sort of like, you know, Twitter famous or Instagram famous um um, shenanigans and run-ins with Frank Ocean if you remember that if you're in the law you remember that Ricardo Tisha and Frank Ocean situation if you don't know Google um, but all that stuff is good but what I'm seeing now at Burberry is paramount to a 
travesty to his legacy. It really, really is. It's so bad. Like, it's beyond bad. Beyond bad is not even something worthy to say. And the reason why I say it's beyond bad is because Kanye West was just at the show supporting his boy. And it was interesting because I thought Kanye West's outfit that he actually wore was 10 times better than anything that was shown at that show anything this is obviously Kanye West standing next to Naomi Campbell obviously you guys would know that but what actually what Kanye actually wore at that show right looked 10 times better than anything that was shown on that runway anything and it's quite sad to be honest because I still think um Ricardo Tissue is still a legendary designer obviously super important but in terms of now he just isn't the guy and this is obviously Kanye standing next to Skepta and I wonder sorry I'm Hey fever, I wonder if or oh, allergies. I wonder if this is just a con. If just if this is more common than Damn. I wonder if this is more common than people in the fashion industry make it known to be, or like if this is just a thing that happens in general. I don't really know. I'm not too sure, but it's just crazy to think of the person who was at Givenchy creating all those epic moments to go from doing this at Burberry, especially at a place where you think Burberry will probably give him the carte blanche to do what he wants because Burberry is essentially a brand that is in desperate need of something. They're trying to look for something to kickstart them, but they just can't seem to find them. They just keep floundering and sort of riding on the coattails of their previous success. But in terms of really setting trends, in terms of really influencing culture and providing new, genuine, real moments at the moment, I can't think of much. The only other thing I can think of, Barry, that I've done really popular that we well was that jacket. I think I saw Tiny Temper when I saw it. As soon as I saw him wear it, I was like, I don't want it anymore. It was like that check jacket. I was sort of like a puffer jacket type thing. Do you remember that? That's the only thing I can remember that really sort of like hit. And everyone was like, oh, I need that. But everything else has just been whatever it may be or maybe these sandals that Kanye is wearing because um, I think these are part of the Burberry collection maybe the whole outfit is Burberry I'm not too sure but I'm pretty sure the sandals are because I saw them in the runaway pictures so maybe these sandals that Kanye is wearing which are like these bejeweled these sandals with like these bejeweled straps on the front of them they may be a part of the thing that may be the thing that kind of sets them off because Kanye wore them really well in this outfit he's got like a leather overshirt on this outfit is nuts by the way let's just say that because it definitely goes to what Kanye says about never caring about being hot or not wearing something because it's going to make him warm or sweaty. Because he's got a leather overshirt over a pullover hoodie that's up over his head with a beard. And he's got another shirt on top that's tied around his waist with leather trousers and black socks and those big jewel sandals. It's just a hot man t-shirt, hot man outfit all day long. And it's funny because the contrast of him and Skepta who looks like he's wearing a short sleeved shirt with dungarees. Which are also leather is interesting. But you know, what can you do? Um, so I thought Kanye looked better than every single model look on that runway. Like this is 10 times better than anything I'm going to show you from the Burberry collection. Like, look at that. You got, you got even auntie Naomi Campbell looking absolutely nuts. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I, I don't really know what's happening. I really don't know what's happening over there. And I'm really wondering, like, can designers fall off? But in this way, such brutal, like such a brutal way, is that fall off that real? Or... Is it the fact that maybe he was never that great as a designer and maybe he had a really excellent team at Givenchy that helped and facilitated him, added to what he already had in terms of a vision and presented it together? Because fashion loves to lionize people, loves a romantic story, loves a story that can add to the law or that can extend a... Um, or that can, yeah, can add to a law, add to the mystique, maybe inadvertently help a fashion school by saying he did this by going to there, uh, perpetuate this idea that you have to go to fashion school, perpetuate this idea that you have to intern. Maybe there's a kind of conspiracy theory in that kind of link to it. Maybe, I'm not really too sure. But I just can't believe the guy that was at Givenchy has gone to designing this stuff. Like, this looks genuinely, genuinely horrible and horrid. Like, this is legitimately a waste of fabric. Like, all this stuff. Like, this look, look number eight. Like, what is that? Like, just tell me what that is. Please. Please tell me, tell me what that is. Like, this look. Like, this is the kind of stuff that people on t fashion Twitter love to criticise people like Matthew Williams about, which I think is completely unfair, especially when you think about the scale, you think about the, play, the kind of the level that Matthew's at in terms of his career, to kind of compare Matthew Williams' work that he's doing at Givenchy to what 
Ricardo Tissue was meant to be a student of the fashion industry, somebody who's kind of well liked in industry, blah, 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 blah. It's just really unfair, like comparing both of them. Uh, but again, I don't think Matthew Williams will do something this bad, personally. I don't think so. Um, look, number 11 and 12 are nuts. What have you got here? You've got some sort of like mesh um, shirt, see through shirt with the, I guess this is what he's doing now, this new logo monogram. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if it's new. I I'm not paying too much attention with Burberry, but it's new to my eyes. Um, this uh, is it a triple B or one B extended um, all over the shirt? It kind of looked Balenciaga S to, S to me, but it's not Balenciaga with a t shirt. I'm not sure if that's underneath or if this t shirt is sewn into it. Either way, it's trash. You've got this horrible metal goth inspired logo. Same thing goes there. Um, you've got this kilt, this hot, oh, I don't know. What is this? Is this this kilt skirt going behind the leg of the trouser, or is that one? I don't know, what it, look number 11, what is that, is that like a dress skirt that goes behind one leg and then is in front of the other, like, what? Again, the flipping wrapping of the jean jackets around the waist with the dress, I didn't like it at the first Bottega show, I'm not going to like it on there as well, so no for that bit of styling. You know what this also looks like, it reminds me of, this looks like a lot like, God bless the dead, um, Virgil Abloh flipping Louis Vuitton, this looks a lot like it which people rip him for. So if you're willing to rip Louis Vuitton, um, designed by Virgil, men's right, you should be able to rip Cartouche the same way. I think this looks worse, personally, for me. This actually legitimately looks worse. Like, I don't I don't know what is going on with this entire thing. I read somewhere it was meant to be inspired by goths, and now I've got this. What is this? Like, I don't know. And again, you know, imagine wearing, like, goth-inspired clothes by, like, a luxury fashion fucking um house like fucking you know burberry just imagine that the irony the irony the irony irony of wearing fucking burberry inspired golf clothes is just wild to me but oh my god it's so so bad really 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 bad and um yeah i don't know what's going on there at Givenchy. i'm sorry at burberry this probably one's one of the worst things i've seen actually nothing looks like it fits um this guy's face in the background is hilarious. I've had cropped on my Twitter, right? This guy in the background in the front row. I'm not sure who he is, but him looking at that, somewhat perplexed. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. That's definitely me in terms of the look. Like, what? Uh, maybe he's not perplexed. Maybe he thinks it's good. But yeah, this is just shocking. All of it is absolutely shocking. Like, ridiculously shocking. But the front row was front rowing. Those all the people that you want know and love to see in those kind of places there presenting themselves. You know, um, there was a, that kid Ding who used to pro, used to pro design back in the day at Yeezy. He was there. Um, Storms. He was there. Kanye was there. So they brought out all the stars, all the legends, and the clothes just were not hitting in the slightest, mate. Like, like what? Like, look at this. Look at these. Ha like, what are? What is this stuff? Like, tell me, what is this stuff? Like, look number forty three and forty four. Like, what is this? Do you need to show two of these looks on a runway? Like, again, and I'm not a fashion designer. Uh, I went to a fashion school in Central Saint Martins, but I studied product design. I didn't study fashion, um, and I'm just a fan, right? I, I started buying Vogue magazines on my own, just as like uh, someone intrigued from ends was the only person that used to legitimately go to Asda and buy Vogue magazines. I like what age was I? Like seventeen or something? I'd buy my own Vogue magazines and read them at home and stuff, and just try and immerse myself in the whole thing. Reading fucking Ram Man Repeller blog back in the day, Susie Bubbles blog, but then she started to become a little bit annoying. Um, fashionista stuff um the other that girl as well that 14 13 year old kid i forgot her name who's now an actress um i used to read her blog and stuff so it's kind of just it's all self-education but even my eye can see that these looks are horrendous and shouldn't be on a runway you don't need two of them at least right to, to send any kind of message or finger across and you can see from the reaction of the people behind it no one's looking at it on the way back it's just eyes forward but oh yeah this is absolutely terrible i don't know what's going on with ricardo tishi this maybe is more similar to his idea of Givenchy men's from back in the day but still all of this is absolutely shocking like i can't see many things on this runway like like look at that look at that look number 51 this is this is giving this is giving um fashion over mate if Fashion Nova made this and just replaced the those Bs with uh, no, FNs or something, you can't complain because this is something that Fashion Nova designer in-house should be making. They should be making this and selling these by the truckload to girls, 
you know, out there in America or where else that buy these sort of things, these sort of like one piece catsuit things with the gloves, uh, especially in this horrible pattern. Like even the pants that look like they fit well. Like look, nothing looks like it fits well. The everything's like just. I can't believe this is going out on. Like it's just it just looks terrible. It really does. Maybe it looks better in person. I have to see it and touch it, and you're not in the store. But God damn it, man, this looks horrible. Like, look at this stuff. If you, if people are praising this. But then ripping into Virgil, I'm going to be pissed off. I'm, I really am. I'm going to be really pissed off because this is the same thing you motherfuckers are pissing off about Virgil. Even Bella looks, look, she's smoking and she, even she doesn't look good in this stuff. It's just, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get to grips with this. God, what is this nonsense? Like, please someone tell me what this shit is. Even that suit, like... A double-breasted blazer of some sorts, with buttons and some oversized trousers in the blue. That do you need to? You need to show all these colors of that same suit. The cut as well as the, like really free colors. Like look, look at Imran Ahmed from Business of Fashion. Is that like, really free? <laughs> it's like such a waste. Like what is this? Like honestly, this is shocking, mate. Absolutely shocking. All of it. Shocking. 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 I can't say anything more about it. Oh, look. Irene. Oh, you're talking about Irene, actually. Let's quickly move on to that one. Talk about Irene. You guys seen this? This is hilarious, right? So this is taken at the backstage where Kanye was at the um, Burberry show. And it's hilarious to me because, number one, this screen grab from the start is going to tell you everything you need to know. Look at look at Irina. How, how, how you pronounce her name? Irina Shike, right? Look at her face. Look at that laugh. That is gutter laugh, right? Chin out, eyes closed, and she's laughing hysterically. Like, Kanye says something legitimately funny. The girl here is just smiling and laughing because she wants to make sure she doesn't, you know, get aired with a handshake or the hug or whatever. Jamie, you're just trying to make sure you get his attention so you can have your little minute with him. But Irina here definitely heard something that she thought was amazing. But also, this shows that they're somewhat cordial or personal. But if you actually click the video and watch it, what you can glean from this is definitely, definitely that these two is these two have been involved in some sort of sexual relation. There's no way you cannot doubt it. Look at this video. Look, look, look at this. Look, look. Let's play again. I got you. <laughs> that hug. I get play again. I got you. I know that hug. We've all been there. We've all kind of crossed paths with somebody that we've maybe, you know, hooked up with in the past in a very cordial, friendly way. And, you know, you don't want to make it bait. So you just, you know, say hi to your mate, whatever it may be. But usually the contact, the look can tell that you've shared some intimacy. You've been you've been um, under covers. You've been behind a bush. You've been behind a seat. You've been on top of something. You've been somewhere, right? Like meshing meshing rubbing against each other and this is a clear sign of it and the funniest thing about it if you're a real Kanye stan you would have known that this is something that I am aware of right that Kanye if I'm not mistaken if I'm not mistaken again I'm not being I'm just being a stan of the guy I'm being a fan of the kid I've been a fan of the kid being a fan of this man right he if I'm not mistaken was the first on paper maybe to be recorded that stepped out on his marriage, I think so, with Kim Kardashian. Or oh, that was already kind of like over it and, and acting over it before they actually got divorced. Because I remember that in the beginning, he was spotted hanging around with Irina a lot, going to places like art galleries and whatnot. I think that's when he first debuted in the mask and whatnot. But they weren't pictured anywhere super, you know, close and intimate. But it's just like they were out in a group of people all the time, going to different places, hanging out, traveling around Europe and just having, you know, some good old adult fun. And I do remember them being pictures of them all together. And that was the first time you'd ever heard of them hanging out either Kim Kardashian or Kanye with somebody that wasn't each other in a kind of that kind of sense. And the rumors did come out and some stories are out there that, yeah, this person is involved. And I think the thing that sealed it for me was a clip or a picture someone posted of Irina Shaikh wearing some merch. What was it? It was 
Yeezy Balenciaga, wasn't it? I don't know what show it was, but something Yeezy Balenciaga that she wore one time that clearly looked like something that someone would gift you. You know what I mean? It's not something that you would buy on your own, especially someone like Irina Shank. I can't imagine her being a an avid merch buyer or a fan of streetwear or even Kanye prior to their meeting and kind of hanging out. So clearly something happened between the both of them and you can clearly see it from this video. It's so bait. Even just rubbing, rubbing, um, you know, moving along this sort of like um, frame, as you can see Kanye kind of looking into the camera, you can see that's a look of a man who's clearly been, you know, clapping those Irina Shaik cheeks for sure. There's no doubt about it at all. So big up my guy Kanye. He always finds a way to kind of get involved in some, you know, top tier women out there. But I thought this interaction was hilarious because it definitely proved that they've had some sort of um sexual relations in the past, I should say. Um, again, I'm just talking and hypothesizing here and throwing out bullshit. I could be completely wrong, but I think that face there tells you everything. I mean, that's like a face of somebody is like, yeah, I hit. <laughs> <laughs> so big up of girl Kanye, but even just the face that she's putting out, this face, come on, man. No one laughs at this. No one, no one. Again, I'm a fan of Kanye. I love the guy, but he's not that funny, right? Let's be real. He's not this funny. The way that she's laughing, she's laughing as if my man's Dave Chappelle or some shit or Dave Attell. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, he's not that funny. Let's just relax. But still, you know, when someone captured cheeks and they're worth a billy, a few billy, you finna laugh. You finna laugh so moving on and i think to end it i'm going to talk about this which is as follows this was the show for Bottega Veneta spring 2023 i think i touched upon it a little bit with my comment i made on twitter but i thought i expand upon it essentially on here so if you guys are aware of course I've, i made a, a a podcast or I recorded something about his prior about the whole shenanigans around Bottega Veneta and the fact that the former designer former creative director in Daniel Lee was unceremoniously booted from the company or maybe left on his own volition we're not really too sure how they kind of specified it because of rumors that he was you know saying some not so nice racial words behind the scenes who knows if that was true who knows if there was a power play behind the scenes because no one liked him and they went to get him out there and they threw out some rumor to get him out whatever we don't know what the truth is but either way Daniel Lee the guy that kind of made Bottega Veneta somewhat relevant again um was the person that was booted and if you believe the fashion industry when he was there at Bottega Veneta he was the one person who was responsible for reviving that entire brand that entire house right he was the one person and it made it was really crazy for me personally because when I saw that first collection under the new director there in um, Matthew uh, Matteo Blasi sorry the first thing that struck me was that it didn't really look that dissimilar to what was happening prior with with, Dan, with Daniel Lee even though I think the last two collections of Bottega Veneta um, I think I've said even myself I think on stream that I didn't like them at all I think they were terrible the last two or something or three that he did the one with the one inside the Berghain a couple of others they were really the one in Detroit they're just like Argh. They weren't good at all, especially when you can think about the first, first Daniel Lee, um, you know, tutelage or under his kind of guidance, but take of an air collection that kind of came out and absolutely blew everything out of the water. The one that I think they have the first lug boots featured in and whatnot. I'm actually going to get up on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. There was a clear difference between the quality of that show and then the ones that happened prior. It was just, you know, it was kind of night and day or the ones that happened kind of after that. Sorry, not prior, after that. They were clearly night and day, right? And I think I'm going to get up on the screen so you guys can see it here. Or is it what show is it? Yeah, there it was. It was um fall 2019. This is of I think he definitely started already at pre fall 2019, but the real debut that everybody remembers that really made some waves that everyone was kind of like, oh shit, protective net is back on the kind of um is back on the circuit and also um the fact that Daniel Lee kind of rose to prominence off the back of this kind of collection as well speaks to it, right? And as you can see, this is the 2019 fall um for 2019 racewear collection loads of staples in here that i'm sure most of you are familiar with if you're into fashion that you've kind of seen copied from other brands in terms of high street brands other brands and just in general that did really well for Bottega Veneta that kind of just launched this entire brand into the stratosphere 
absolutely incredible work, right? Like, especially this was one of my favourite looks ever, to be honest, from that era of Daniel Lee at flipping uh, Bottega Veneta look 10 with these motorcycle, leather motorcycle pants, this um, asymmetrical, weird type of knit. I don't know if it does a two-piece or altogether one-piece. It's really cool. And then the little detail there with the clip is really nice. So loads of great looks in there that I'm sure most of you have kind of seen been replicated and copied by other designers and houses and whatnot so this was the, obviously the first time people really got an idea oh shit man this particular net stuff is serious but as soon as the change was made and Matteo Blasi was brought in I think I couldn't notice that much of a difference and I think this resin collection that he just put out is a good example of it this spring 2023 collection right I think definitely illustrates the fact that I think in general, this is another illustration of the fashion industry selling us or presenting smoke and mirrors because they made it seem like Daniel Lee was the most important person at Bottega Veneta, that he was the one in, in, responsible for bringing that dying um, house back or whatever it may be. And then he gets fired and then Matthew Bla Matthew Blasey comes in and basically just carries on doing the great work that was already laid the foundations of, right? Or Daniel Lee the foundations of. Like, it, it didn't really miss a beat since then, which makes me think that maybe Daniel Lee wasn't as big of an important role there. Maybe he was part of a team that together collectively presented an amazing vision of a take of Vanessa. But because of the branding and the kind of positioning and communication that brands and fashion houses like to do, they had to lionize and put someone on the pulpit or put someone, sorry, on a pedestal and make them seem like the all-seeing, all-knowing designer. And what better way to do it than to have one person kind of, you know, facing the music, being in front of it. But really, the people behind the scenes are the ones that are mainly making the magic or allowing or giving the person that kind of space to kind of, work um in a good way and you can clearly see this in this spring 2023 collection because i think this is obviously the second collection that matthew blaz has done on his own and it's clearly um a continuation of all the great work that daniel lee kind of laid and also it kind of takes it to another level also you're seeing a lot of really good stuff in here that i'm a big fan of and i also like the fact that it's very relaxed right this sort of um presentation especially when you come out with the first look being a flannel um, what looks like a flannel, looks like a chinos, or looks like a, a, a you know a vest top with a tote bag. You don't get more relaxed and easy going than that. Especially this, you got an oversized shirt tucked into some jeans with some boots and a bag. It's just really classic, um, comfy type of wear. You even got Kate Moss wearing a tartan or a plaid shirt, which is wild. I don't think I've seen ever wear this on a sort of runway. This sort of look, I love this look here again. Number five. Which looks like a pinstripe, I'm assuming. I'm not going to pick because I don't want to waste too much time. But the pinstripe here is good with the oversized white t shirt. Again, with the uh, jeans. I think they look like jeans. They could be leather, they could be suede. Not really too sure when it comes to Matteo Blasi. He has a really cool way of um, manipulating and playing with materials as well and finishes. And yeah, loads of just really cool stuff, interesting stuff that I'm really a big fan of in everything. And again, the casting is, point, is bang on as well. Um, it doesn't what's the stuff that uh, most Brian boys say they're not uh, it doesn't feel like they're like um, what's that what, what do you say about Bottega Veneta what do you say Brian boy um, he says something about Bottega Veneta basically you know playing to the crowd in terms of black people but I think the casting is way more interesting in terms of just looking at with the eye and I like the fact that they request these side profile pictures of the malls walking down the runway okay it definitely adds another bit of dynamism and intrigue in terms of the overall look so you get to see the silhouette here from the side you get to see how the pants are cut differently especially these ones they look like they've got some sort of um upwards curve towards the back of where the pleat is which looks really interesting the heel it looks like again you've got this really cut, nice curved um stiletto here in the back you've got the little um what you call it whatever they call it, crochet leather thing on the front of the heel this jack this outfit too relaxed looks really cool obviously it maybe look better without a jacket with the button tied but the fact that this man has on leather pleated trousers with a leather blazer and also a white vest you know, it's just yeah the the opulence of that is absolutely insane really is top level um some good stuff on here as well. I'm not sure if that's been 3D. What's that thing? I'm sure I'll do it, right? Where they do these 3D modeling tailored pieces and stuff. I'm not sure that's the one, but that also looks pretty cool. And more stuff here. And again, more quality stuff. But yeah, and again, this leather dress here and look number 25 is absolutely storming as well. So loads of really great stuff on here and I'm a big fan of. But yeah, look at that side profile with the view. That's pretty cool, isn't it? 
so you can get to see the side of the shoe and the side of the trousers maybe all the trousers have that weird oh no it's not it's not it's not a, it's not a thing i just realized what it is my bad it's the pins okay it's the styling pins i thought it was a cut it's not i think it's the styling pins i think that's what they are of the trousers they've been taken in a bit because i guess they're all wider um but i guess for the runway they took them in to make them look this way at the front okay cool there we go i thought it was actually the trouser shape which might which no it's not a bad idea to be fair that could probably work as well i'm just you know pontificating here like i've actually fucking designed and collection myself but yeah look at the even these prints that's when you can tell that basically basically Mateo Blazer did a good job because I think even the last couple of collections there weren't many cool prints that he was doing and obviously Mr. Blazy knows how to do that stuff really really well so all this stuff is great everything about it is great I'm a big fan of this particular one that for um sorry spring 2023 look especially so a collection for particular one that's ready to wear so definitely check it out if you haven't already checked it out because I'm a big fan of what this man's doing at this house. I really am a big fan. I cannot lie. I cannot lie. So, that is Exxon Show, episode number, what, 604. Thanks again for tuning into the show. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time checking me out, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below if you want to check out more stuff concerning myself. If you don't, I get it too. Don't check it out. Come back another time. But I thank you regardless for hanging around this long. And hopefully see you guys very soon. Take care. Be safe. Obviously, you're going to hear Tune of the Day. If you listen to the audio podcast, if you're watching the video, no Tune of the Day. Just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. <laughs>